When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, communities celebrate. Awqaf South Africa, a charitable waqaf receiving organization makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a great variety of charitable causes. Visit the Awqaf South Africa website at awqafsa.org.za to discover how your waqaf can bless our community with the legacy of care. Awqaf South Every single orphan child in South Africa should have the opportunity to enjoy a carefree childhood. But with over 2 million children in need of orphan care, the need is greater than the available resources. The Quran reminds us of two fundamental rights of orphan children, the right to support and the right to be treated with dignity. The Quran furthermore sees taking care of orphans as an act of worship. By supporting the Awqaf South Africa Yatim Waqaf, you will help us support a number of children's homes with the upgrading of infrastructure, their health care, education, clothing, and overall well-being. Help us share the care and give an orphaned child a chance at a happy childhood and a bright future. Water, as the most precious blessing from Allah, it gives and sustains life while purifying humankind and the earth. The Awqaf South Africa Water and Sanitation Waqaf is dedicated to assisting schools and communities in need of water, thereby impacting on the lives of thousands, especially in rural communities, in drought-prone areas of South Africa. The need is hard to quench, as is the joy and gratitude of those who benefit from it. One borehole can cost as much as 80,000 rand. It may sound overwhelming, but when we all pitch in, it's doable. How much will you pitch in, Awqaf South Africa? Share the care. Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving, prosperous society. However, the South African education system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Awqaf South Africa Education Waqaf to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 6,000 matriculants. At the Darul Arqam High School in Mitchell's Plain, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as Iqra, read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives. Awqaf South Africa, share the care. We begin in the name of God, we glorify and we praise Him.
May we have a program that is enriching and beneficial. Assalamu alaikum, Kuyamora, Saubana, Molo, and good morning and a warm welcome to all of our grade 12 learners who have joined us from Bloemfontein, Cape Town, Limpopo, Northern Cape, Gauteng, KwaZulu Natal, Lady Smith. Uh, you are most welcome. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, you could be connecting via Facebook and via YouTube. Let us know where you are connecting uh, to us uh, from. Let us know in the comments. Uh, we hope um, and it's our intention for this program to be a very interactive and a very uh, fun one. So let us know in the comments below. Let us know also in the comments below. Hit us up with a one if you are connecting to the live session and hit us up with a two if you are viewing this as a post-event live stream. My name is Hassanin Abdullah and I'm the project manager at OCAV South Africa and I'll be your host for today. OCAV has identified the need to upgrade the level of literacy for grade 12 learners. And this is why we have put together this program um, to improve the level of literacy uh, for grade 12 learners. This is indeed a flagship project of OCAF, uh, the, math, the Maths Upgrade uh, project to improve the level of education. The focus for this paper, uh, this workshop uh, today, uh, this will, uh, we will focus on um, pure maths and, and maths paper one. Um, tomorrow, Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., we will be focusing on maths paper two. So I've got a video to, to show you. This is a, a welcome message from uh, Zafar Ahmed, and he is from Okaf. Good day to all of our grade 12 warriors. Indeed, you are a special group of students who have endured a global COVID pandemic both in your grade 11 and grade 12 schooling years. And you now stand at the threshold of that all important matric exam. My name is Zafar Ahmed, I'm the Deputy CEO of OCA South Africa, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the special maths intervention program that OCA is hosting in collaboration with our expert maths tutor, Muhammad Kota, from an organization called Kway Maths. Now, as of two days ago, we had over 550 matric students that had registered for this two-day math seminar. Now, just a very quick word about OCAF South Africa. We're a community-based organization. We're a charitable organization. We're an endowment organization. And we generate income so that we can assist communities in a various projects. So up to now, we've done PC labs, boreholes, cataract operations, digital marketing, and we also do a fair amount in terms of education. This particular program with KW Maths is a program that OCAF has conducted for a number of years now. And pre-COVID, we were actually able to go out to various communities and offer this on site. But of course, you know, with COVID, it becomes a bit difficult, but with that challenge presents us with a new opportunity. So we're able to offer this on a digital platform to you. And the added benefit of this is that you can now go back and review and re-watch this recording on YouTube or the OCAF platform. The recordings will be there. And you can play this again and again as a point of reference. Uh, if you've missed something over the weekend or if you want to double check something, that's an added benefit of having it done digitally. So I hope you participate fully and derive maximum benefit from this two days and this two-day session that we have allocated to you. And on behalf of OCAF South Africa, we wish you every success in your forthcoming final examinations and indeed success for all of your future endeavors. I wish to thank you so much for participating in this program. God bless you. Take care and enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you very much. So we thank Safar Ahmed for that warm welcome. Uh, he is involved in uh, with OCAF South Africa and is involved in education as well. So kindly, um, all of the information in, in, in terms of the 
that is required for the session today is on the OCAF essays website. So kindly visit okafessay.org.za. We will we have posted the the live stream video for day one and the link for day two on there. And in the event if we do have breakage and uh, this connection fails, we will post up another link um, as a backup plan on this website. So kindly visit okafsa.org.za. So kindly let us know in the comments, where are you um, logging on? From which province in South Africa? We hope uh, and, and it's our intention to have an interactive session uh, with regards for today. So let me also just flight some of the details for OCAF. So this is the OCAF Essays website address, and please would love your feedback on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook and YouTube as well. Feel free to, to interact with us, give us photos we, um, um, how you are logging on, or perhaps you uh, in front of your laptop, um, and so on. Uh, so we really appreciate that feedback from you. So I'm going to be uh, sharing some uh, more information on uh, Mr. Kota. Mr. Kota um, is going to be the facilitator for today. Um, and Mr. Kota has been our implementing agent for the last five years. We've been conducting uh, contact uh, workshops across South Africa. And uh, Mr. Kota has been conducting these uh, sessions to prepare grade 12 learners for the final matric uh, examination. And this year we've decided to do this as a virtual uh, workshop um, because there are some risks attached to having contact events. So Mr. Kota um, has received his tertiary level of education at the University of Johannesburg. And he's very passionate about mathematics and more importantly, teaching that. So we're going to bring on Mr. Kota and he's going to be uh, our facilitator for the day. And we hope um, to have some fun and learning with uh, Mr. Kota today. Asalaamu Alaikum, Mr. Kota, and welcome to the session. Ah, wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Jazakallah. Thank you so much, Hassanain. Yes, yeah, so and Mr. Kota is joining us from um, the OCAF uh, studios in, in Johannesburg. I'm linking on from Cape Town. So tell me, Mr. Kota, I'm really excited for the session today. Um, you know, it's it, it's been a very great build-up. We have about uh, 700 plus learners that have registered, and we wow. have currently about 150 learners that are on. And I've been really enjoying the interaction. So over to you, Mr. Kota. Let us know what we can expect for today. Jazakallah khair. Uh, just want to say uh, Jazakallah to Oka for making this groundbreaking initiative. Actually, it's a world record uh, where we had 700 learners. It's the first time ever that we're going to have so many learners in a max workshop online. So I just want to say Jazakallah to Okaf and Jazakallah to the organizers. And also thank you to all the learners who have just joined us from all the different uh, uh, provinces. I'm seeing Western Cape on cell phone. I'm seeing Johannesburg. I'm seeing Mitch oh, Mitchell's Plain. We've got Ladysmith KZN. We've got Limpopo. Beautiful. Excellent. Welcome to the K-Way show. It's going to be, we've got a bumper pack program today. We're going to start off with your guys' worst nightmare, which is calculus. Now, just to give you a little history about myself, where we began and where we started, and I think it's very important before we get started with the program to get your mindset right, to be able to sit through such a long... Some of you can't sit and pay attention for 30 minutes in class, and now you're going to sit and pay attention for seven hours in a maths workshop. So to get your mindset right, when I was in grade 12, June exam, June grade 12, this was 1993 when the hair was still on my head and not on my face, Right. In 1993, so now you can calculate my age. I'm 45. Right. I know I look 75, but I'm still 45. But in any case, June exam, grade 12, I was failing maths, like most of you or like some of you, right? Below 20% in mathematics. I sat with somebody. They showed me the system. It's all about processes, copy and paste. And within a sh very short period of time, within two months, I mastered the whole maths content. At the end of the year, my final exam, I got an A for maths, right? I finished a three-hour paper in one and a half hours. They just gave me an A. My symbol just said an A, but I know I got 100%. So I finished a three-hour paper in one and a half hours. I did the same paper twice in the exam in two different ways to make sure that I got it 100% correct 
I know I got, I don't think I know, I know I know <laughs> I got 100% for math. And that was my uh, motivation to go into math. If you had to ask me 20 years ago or 30 years ago, would you be a facilitator for maths? I say, are you out of your mind? Is there something wrong with you? Uh, I, I was thinking, no, I'll go and do BCom, I'll do commerce, I'll, become, I'll do engineering, whatever. And you know, when you get 100% in maths, you don't apply to universities, universities apply to you. So this was my motivation. I then went to university. I specialized in mathematics. And I said, if I could do it in math, the whole country can do it. And this was my dua. This was my prayer from the day I started. And today, alhamdulillah, this is the start of that. We've now seen up to date about 1.6 million learners across the country over the past 20 years. And you are now the new generation, uh, the millennials. I think you guys are called. I don't know. Look, I don't know your guys' terminologies, right? I don't know your lingo. But I think you guys are called the millennials. So if you are the millennials, then this is the whole digital space where now my dream was to have a single tutor to teach the whole country because the country is in shambles. And if we can get one facilitator to teach the whole country, then maybe we could see a massive change in the numbers. So this is day one. This is the beginning of that groundbreaking initiative. And today we might have 500. We might have 150, we might have a thousand. Next year, inshallah, we should have, and inshallah means God willing, inshallah, we should have at least 10,000, 15,000. Who knows, within two years, we could have a million, two million learners uh, all at the same time. So without any further ado, I hope you guys are all excited. We're starting now at 10, 15. Okay, it's 10, 16, but we're starting now. We're going to start with calculus till 11, 30. We'll have a 30 minute break. There's the program. The program is being put on your screen. From 12 to 1, we'll do functions. One, uh, we'll take a 15-minute salah break, prayer break for all the Muslim learners. And then from quarter past 1 to 2 o'clock, we'll do finance, sequences, and series we'll end off with today. Tomorrow morning, we'll start with paper 2 and we'll end up with probability. So I will give you the program for tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Right. So guys, I hope you have your scientific calculators, whether it's the black one, right, or the silver one. I know some of your teachers say you're not allowed to take your silver one into the exam. A lot of the learners who are learning who are doing Sakai or doing IEB, they go into schools, they allow them to do use the silver calculator. Take both calculators into the exam. If they tell you, no, you can't use the, the, the silver one, then put it aside. If they allow you to use the silver one, take it with you in, it will help you to factorize. All right. So I hope you've got your scientific calculator, your exam pad your stationary refreshments and snacks, your Red Bulls, energy drinks, monsters, dragons, I don't know, whatever you guys are drinking. And I know some of you got your shisha pipe now. You uh, Okay, but I'm, I'm not... Mr. Encouraged. Kota, this is a family uh, station, so let's keep we it... We're saying they're not supposed to. Uh, okay, mm. anyway, <laughs> they're not supposed to be heavy. Yellow That's card for you, Mr. Kota, you've been warned. <laughs> yellow card okay. next card is a red card okay guys so keep all those things aside get your stationery get ready and let's get started with today's program very exciting program guys let's get started uh Hassanin, i think we can pull up our jam board and bismillah in the name of god teachers i know there are some teachers also online so teachers you are welcome to post your comments um if you got a better way of doing some of the strategies that we're going to be showing we're going to be focusing on processes and procedures so when we master those processes we master the procedures the paper will be like a hot knife through butter so without any further ado bismillah let's get started we're starting with calculus now we all know calculus is a big topic in the exams Right, it's worth about 40 marks. So let's put your overview of calculus. So let's write the, the topic, calculus, right? And what are the topics that are required? The first topic that we need to know, and it's also the first question under calculus, is first principles. Right, so take this down. So we know first principles, it's probably about five marks in your exam, four to five marks in your exam. The second topic is differentiation, differentiation. And I'll show you all the different types of how to differentiate. And I'll show you my strategies and my systems that I used in matric in order to get 100% in math. So hopefully you guys can all employ those. So differentiation, you'll get an easy one, one for three marks and one for five marks. So total marks about eight. Then we need to know the equations of tangents, the equations of tangents. And this is very important. There are three or four different types of equations of tangents. And that would be at least about six to eight marks. Then we've got our next topic, which is the cubic graph, the cubic function. 
right? We can include limits under your differentiation also, right? But um, we're going to be focusing on the cubic graph. The cubic graph would be about 12 to 15 marks, right? How to sketch and how to find equation and how to process uh, the, the, the type of questions that will be asked on the cubic graph. And then we've got the last topic, which is called optimization. Now, optimization is calculus application, volume and total surface area, right? So optimization, calculus application in real life, then that would be about 10 marks. So in total, in total, if we add up all the marks, 5 and 8 is 13 and 6 is 19 and 12 is 31, 41. So give or take 40 marks, plus or minus 40 marks, which is almost a third of your paper, guys. Almost a third of your paper is calculus. So obviously, if you get that and you're only aiming to pass, that means you can only master calculus, answer the paper, and you'll get your 30%. But here at Kway, we're not aiming for 30. We're aiming for 100. And they always say, you know, Murphy's Law, they say that you always get 20% less than what you aim for. So if you aim for 100, you'll get, a, you'll get about 80 on average. If you aim for 80, you'll get about 60. Some of you only aim for 40. So now you know why you're sitting with the marks that you're getting. Okay. But in any case, these are our topics. And let's start with calculus. Let's start first with, let me clear the frame. Let's clear the frame. I hope you've taken all these topics down. This is the order in which the questions generally are asked. This is uh, across all the papers. Now, before we even start with calculus, I want to ask you, right, we've got 500 learners online. I would like to ask you, what is the meaning of the word? You've been doing it the whole year. You were prepared already for the, for the prelim exam. You even wrote your prelim exam. You wrote the topic of calculus. But how many of you here know what is the meaning? And why do we use calculus? And the word calculus simply means gradient. We are finding the gradient at any point of a graph. Now, just to explain to you something before we go into something. You know for a straight line graph, to find the gradient of it, we're going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. For any, that's for a straight line. For any other graph besides a straight line, so whether we have a cubic graph, whether we have a parabola, whether we have a hyperbola, any other graph besides that, we use what we call the derivative. Now, the word derivative means gradient. And there are different ways of finding the derivative. The first way of finding the derivative is using first principles. So the general gradient of f of x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The simplified version is h. So this is the same. This and that is identical, right? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you now how we derive it. You don't need to know it. It's just there for you to expand your knowledge on how we derive the formula for first principles. So I hope you guys are all understanding Zaim. We've actually got a class here in studio. We've got Hamza, we've got Yasin, we've got uh, Zaim, we've got Umaid. Welcome guys. Welcome to our class here. We've, we're also beaming it on a big screen here in class. So I've got some live learners here to give me some reaction. So I know whether they're understanding or whether they, we need to repeat. And we've got all our learners online. So again, a warm welcome to everybody else. Okay, let's just uh, flip the screen there. Everything all looks good. I hope all your cell phones are off and I hope they are all on silent. Okay, let's get started here. Let me show you now. This is your calculus formula. Now, if you don't believe me, think about this. I want you to think about something, right? So watch this. You don't need to take this down. That is a parabola and that is a secant. That is a parabola, and that is a secant. A secant touches at two point, a tangent touches at one point. You all know that. We know if this value here is x, then its y value is f of x, the function value, the y value, yes or no? If the distance between there and there is h, then this one's y value at this point. Remember, we're finding we need two points, right? y2 minus y1. So this point here would be x plus h, x plus h, and its y value, so this point, the x value would be x plus h. Its y value is f of x plus h. Right, Zayim? This point here is x, and its y value is f of x. Now, let me just change the color there. Right? Let's call this, oh, let's see here. Uh, let's change the color here. Let's call that x2, uh, sorry, x2, y2. 
And let's call that x1, y1. So if we want to find the gradient, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we don't say m in calculus, we say f dash x. f prime x, f dash x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero. And I'll explain to you what that means. y2 minus y1, y2 is f of x plus h minus y1, which is f of x over x2, which is x plus h, minus x1, which is x. Now, plus x minus x will cancel out. What are we left with, guys? So can you, can you see? Can you see what is the derivative here? y2 minus y1, it's the gradient, over h. Now, many of you ask, so now you say, oh, light bulb moment. Is that all that it meant? Yes. And what does limit as h tends to zero mean? If the distance between here and here is, say, 10 units, we want to find out what is the maximum distance that that secant can travel until it almost becomes a tangent, but it doesn't become a tangent. So it approaches zero, but doesn't equal to zero. So if the distance between the two is, say, 10 units, as it gets narrower, it gets 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What number is it approaching? Zero. So there we go. So basically, let's convert this to English. The general gradient on f of x is given by, is equal to the maximum distance that the secant will travel to becoming a tangent, to almost becoming a tangent, by the simplified version of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's what it means in English. Okay, so like I said, you don't need to know this. This is just to expand your mind. This is just to make you know that the word calculus refers to the gradient at any point on the function. Okay, so we were finding the gradient here on the parabola. Okay, let's get started now with first principles. And I'm starting immediately with an exam question. All right, so let's change the color here. And let's go. This is how it will appear in the exam. If f of x, if f of x is equal to, let's say, minus 3x squared plus 4x, find f dash x, find the general gradient by first principles. And that is your instruction for you to use the formula. Many of you already by now, you excited. You know what, you've seen this one before. You'll already start practicing. For those of you who don't know, let's get started in our answer. Now, what I generally do in our, in my, the way I would do it, I first find out what is f of x plus h. I don't go directly into the formula. Chances are going directly into the formula, you might make a mistake. So if you want to, I do f of x plus h separately, then I go into the formula. Okay, so let's go. We go minus 3. For every x, we're going to put x plus h all squared plus 4 into x plus h. You are allowed to do this in the exam. So that would give you minus 3 into, by now you all know, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Multiply that out plus 4x plus 4h. And what are we left with here, guys? We left with, if we multiply it all out, minus 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared plus 4x plus 4h. There we go. Now we go into our formula. You don't get marks for this. Now you start. You must put your formula in. You get a mark for your formula. So f dash x is equal to the limit as h, of h tends to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. There we go. Right. Start substituting. Put it in. Put it in. How's our production studio? Cameraman, everybody here in studio, we're all good. They're all giving us a thumbs up. You guys enjoying the program so far? I hope you guys are. Right, f of x plus h minus 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3 h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus f of x minus minus 3x squared plus 3x squared minus 4x. We change both these signs because of this negative sign. We change both these signs all over h. That will give us the limit as h tends to zero. You've got to put the limit right through. You will only insert the limit right at the end. We got minus 3x squared plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4x. We want to cancel out the h. So we take out h as our highest common factor. We then left with minus 6x minus 3h plus 4 all over h. h and h will cancel out. Now you say but h tends to zero. Therefore, f dash x. Hamza, are we good? All right, you following? Good. 
right? So that's zero. Negative three times h, h tends to zero. So what am I left with? Minus six x plus four, minus six x, negative six x plus four. And do we think we write or do we know we write? We know we write because if we find the derivative here, the shortcut, you know the power rule, two times minus three is minus six x. Remember, we subtract one from the power plus four. But we're going to be doing uh, derivatives and differentiation thereafter. So guys, this is not only an example that I'm using to show you how it's done. So step number one, do f of x plus h. Step number two, put in your formula. Step number three, you substitute. Step number four, you take out your HCF. And step number five, you substitute h uh, zero for h and you get your final answer. And there we go, boys and girls. That would be your first guaranteed four to five marks. So this is level one. We're going to do, be doing one or two questions, depending on how many. Remember, we don't have much time. So we're going to try and do as much as we can in the little time that we have to ensure that you guys are sort of fully prepared for your final exams. OK, I hope you guys have taken this down. Are you guys all OK? Can I clear the screen? Uh, let's uh, go back. Let me just flip over there. Hassanain, are we all good on that side, my brother? How's the team there on uh, from your side? Yes, we're doing well. We're getting lots of uh, feedback and interaction from lots of the learners. Looks like Durban is ruling the roost. We've got yeah. lots of participants from all over, but KZN is in the house. We just had a question from Mika, and I yeah. don't know if we can just... Um, answer that or add clarity to that you know yeah. hope this makes yeah. sense I, I think this was based on the previous uh, um, problem you were trying to solve on board okay okay yeah so we got the distance of h is at an angle how can the second point be x plus h you've got your first distance which is x your second distance which is h we're assuming that the distance all we're saying is we're assuming that the distance between those two points say it's a given we're not calculating that distance we're saying that that distance between that first point and second point is h. So your second point at that point, the distance between those two points is h. So therefore, that one's coordinate would be x plus h. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Let's go into the second question. Let's go into the second exam question. I'm clearing the frame. I'm clearing the frame. Let's do another, let's do a higher order question. I tell you, if f of x if f of x is equal to 1 over x, find f dash x, find f dash x by first principles. So now we have to use the formula. You can't just do the derivative. So in your answer, let's get started. Let's get started. We can say f of x plus h. For every x, we're going to put in x plus h. So x plus h. Let's go into our formula, f dash x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of seconds to try and do this one on your own. And while we're doing that, there we go. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Again, just another thank you for all your comments, all coming in from Cape Town. I see Cape Town, Polokwani. I see comments coming in here from KZN. Welcome, everybody. Some of you know me. Some of you don't know me. But uh, yeah, welcome to our show. And I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. OK, we're going to be trying to do as much as we can. All right, so let's go. f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h, 1 over x plus h, minus f of x minus 1 over x divided by h. So I'm just going to move it to the side, divided by h over 1. All right? Because I don't want to work with a fraction over a fraction. So that is the limit as h tends to 0. We're then going to have x into x plus h, my LCD. I'm subtracting two fractions, so I'm doing my lowest common denominator. So x plus h, x plus h will cancel. You're left with x. x times 1 is x minus x and x will cancel. x plus h times 1 is x plus h. Right, Hamza? Divided by h, tip and times, times 1 over h. So that is the limit as h tends or approaches 0. We're going to have x minus x minus h all over x squared plus xh. 
I multiplied it out, multiplied by 1 over h. Positive x, negative x will cancel out. h and the h will cancel out. Don't forget there's a minus there. So it's minus 1. Now you can say, but h tends to 0. I'm just moving over to the side. You can carry on at the bottom because I don't have enough screen. Therefore, f dash x is equal to, so if that is 0, if that is 0, what are you left with? Minus 1 over x squared. Minus 1 over x squared. And there we go. That's your final answer. Minus 1 over x squared. And that is your first principles. Guys, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to spend too much on first principles now. We've done two questions. We've done one easy, one slightly challenging question. I hope you guys are all okay. Umaid, you okay there? Zaim, you okay? Onliners, I hope you're all okay there. Okay. Let's go into our uh, next topic now. Derivative. Differentiation. Now, let me explain to you what is the derivative. Firstly, we're going to do the derivative. Right. So, I'm clearing the screen. I hope you guys all took it down. Mr. Kota, uh, I'm really enjoying the session. I'm definitely brushing, brushing up on my mathematics. Um, right. and, and, and look, this is like really fun. We just got a question from one of the participants and they are asking, yes. will there be a recording available of the session, right? Yes. So, and, and this might also benefit all of the other participants that this session you'll be able to refer back to it. You know, if we're going too slow, we're going too fast, you can refer back to the session. It is hosted on YouTube. So if you log on to the OCAF's website, ocavsa.org.za, all of that information will be on the on the website. So that's the address as uh, well. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this is a fantastic resource. So the learners and the participants can refer back to it. Right. Yes. Over oh, excellent. Mystical. And what they can do as well, if they've got a, if they're watching it on their big screen TV and they're connecting, connecting via HDMI, they can actually take their devices or and record and video the entire thing and keep on watching it over and over and over again. You know. So go to the OCAF website. You can do your own recordings of the show, or you can. Um, is it only on the OCAF website, or it will be uh, the. It's uploaded onto YouTube as well. Am I correct? It's on this session is been live streamed via YouTube. So if you go on to OCAF SA's website, on the landing page, we have got a link to the YouTube page. Oh, excellent. Some of our learners are connecting to us via Facebook, OCAF right. South Africa on Facebook. Oh, lovely. They, so the moment the session is uh, done with, there is going to be an archive and a copy. So Excellent. rest assured that you have a resource or archive to refer back to that. Excellent. And I just so this is just for you, grade 12 learners. This is a resource to assist you for your final examination. And we really are confident that this is gonna motivate, encourage you, put your nerves at edge uh, at, at ease, and also achieve the best that you can in your final examination. It's over to you, Mr. Kota. Zakala, thank you so much. Right, I know the learners are getting jittery now. Let's get on with the program, Mr. K. Give us some beef. Give us some meat. So, right, let's go to this. Let's go to the, the derivative. Let's talk about the derivative. Now, the derivative is the shortcut, right? The derivative is the shortcut where you don't use, where they just ask you. So, from if f of x is equal to, let's say, 3x to the power 4 minus 5x to the power 3 uh, plus 8x minus 2, for example. And they say, find f dash x. So now we use what we call the power rule. So we don't need to use the formula. So the power rule is we take, you can write the rule down. We take the power, we multiply it by the coefficient to get your new coefficient. And then we minus 1 from the power, we subtract 1 from the power, right? We subtract minus 1 from the power to get your new power. And we do this for each term. We also know that the derivative of a constant, the derivative of a whole number of a constant is 0. Why? Because a straight line, a straight line, if you had a graph like that, 
a straight line going through x has got zero gradient. So the derivative of a constant is always zero. Right. So we go straight f dash x. That's the derivative. Let's apply the power rule. So power times coefficient to get your new coefficient. So 4 times 3 is 12 x minus 1 from the power to get your new power. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times minus 5 minus 15 x to the power 3 minus 1 is 2 plus 1 times 8 is 8 x to the power 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. That will be 1. And the derivative of a constant is zero. And there we go. That is what your derivative is. That's your general gradient. Your general gradient is always one power less than your original. So if your original is a cube, your derivative will be a parabola, a square. If your original is a square, your derivative will be a straight line, power one. If your derivative is a straight line, then your, if the original is a straight line, your derivative will be zero. That's how you zero a number you find it's you find it's like you're peeling a layer of an onion. One layer of all the time, first derivative. We'll get to second derivative a little later. So that's just the basics of the derivative. Now let's go into, so this is finding the gradient. First principles, we use the formula to find the gradient. Now we use the power rule to find the gradient. Now we're going to do what we call differentiation. So put the topic there. And I'm going to show you different types of differentiation. Right, so I'm clearing the frame. Put the heading differentiation. Now, I like to explain it a little differently to the way your teachers or everybody else would show you differentiation, right? Now, differentiation is the process of finding the process of finding the derivative. For more complex graphs, finding the derivative for, for more complex functions, right? Or equations. Now, we do it in three ways, in three steps. B, D, A. Now, before we go into this, I just want to show you the format. So the formats. So if you had f of x, then your derivative will be f dash x. If you had y and you had x on the other side, then you'll say dy over dx. We are differentiating y in terms of x. If you had your area of volume and you had x on the other side, then you'll say dA. When you're finding the derivative, you'll say dA over dx. If you had it as dx like this in brackets, and no matter what was in there, in your original, when you're finding your derivative, you'll put equal to. That equal to will say that you're applying the power rule. So those are just your formats of the derivative. Let's go to differentiation. We got your before, we got your during, and you got your after. So the before differentiation, what you want to do is you want to get it linear. You want to get your equation in a straight line. And you want to use your normal rules of exponents to get it, of simplification, to get it. So what do you want to do? You want to remove all your unknowns from the denominator, right? Your unknowns from the denominator, what you want to do is you want to remove brackets or you want to remove your third side. Then we've got death. So before death, death and after death, right? So before death, you want to get, you're about to execute people. So they all got clothes on, right, Zane? So what you want to do is put them all in a straight line and you want to undress them. You want to get them in their boxer shorts. How do you undress an equation? You remove their brackets. You remove the third signs. You remove unknowns from the denominator. Right, Hamza? So we're putting them all in a straight line. Now death by differentiation. How do we find? So it's a sword action. Right. So it's the power times coefficient. Derivative times coefficient. And then minus one from power. So you... Minus 1 from the power. So you're slicing each term's head off. Right. So power times coefficient and then minus 1 from the power. So make sure that you don't. So death by differentiation. Before, before death, death and after death. Before differentiation, differentiation. After differentiation, you want to write your answer with positive powers. Your answer with positive powers. So it's a three-step process, but you get different types. Right, so BDA. So whenever you're thinking of the dif differentiation, we're going to do it in three parts. Right, Junior? Our cameraman here, he's also learning maths. He's enjoying it. He's sitting with his workbook and calculator here. Right? Are you processing? Bringing back memories of school, bro. <laughs> right, let's get started. The first, so now we're going to do them all in BDA. So let's start with type number one. Type number one that you could see in your exam. Here goes. Right, type one. Type 1. Now, the time is going so fast. 
We started at quarter past, it's quarter two already. We're going to have to push for time. We might go over time. Remember, just give us two days, guys. I know maybe you guys will enjoy it so much, you will want to sit till five o'clock tomorrow. Inshallah. Right. Say, so just finish everything, Mr. K. Just finish. Makom Kla. Right. So type one. So we tell you y is equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 over square root x. So this type one is over one term. So that's how you identify. And they say, find the question in the exam says, find dy over dx. Okay. So in your answer, BDA, before differentiation. So is this in its simplified form? No, we got to simplify, right, Yasin? So what are we going to do? Now let's say this is equal to 3x squared over x to the half, right? So when you've got one term in the denominator, you make each term over that, minus 2x to the 1 over x to the half, plus 5 over x to the half, right? That's not, is that in its simplified form? No, we still need to simplify it further. So y is equal to 3 over 1 is 3, x, we're dividing, bases are the same, we subtract the power, so 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, 3 over 2, minus 2, x to the power, 1 minus a half is a half, plus 5, x to the plus half will come up to the top as x to the power minus half, so there we go, we, that's our B, don't go and write BDA in your exam, this is just for your understanding, right, your teacher will write WTH, what the hell, right, so just write there, so, you know, that's your before part. You're getting it in a straight line, linear. Now we apply the power rule. Therefore, dy over dx is equal to, so 3 times 3, so 3 over 2 times 3 is 9 over 2, x to the power, 1 and a half minus 1 is a half, minus a half times 2 is 1, x, half minus 1 is minus a half, negative times positive is a negative, 5 times a half is 5 over 2, x to the power minus a half minus one is minus one and a half minus three over two. So there we go. That's your D, differentiation. And now after differentiation, this is equal to, we must write it with positive powers. So we got nine over two x to the power half minus one over x to the power half minus five over two x to the power three over two. And there we go. That's your final answer. You'll get four to five marks for that. That is your first type number one. We're going to do about four types. Okay, we're going to do about four times. Zayn, you okay? Umaid, you okay? Yasin, you okay? Onliners, are you okay? I hope. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, join us. Remember, Mohamed Kota, Kway Institute. Right, you guys can Google us. You can also check www.kwayinstitute.co.za to get more information about what we do. Right, so we also host private classes, private workshops, not only for grade 12, but for grade 10. In fact, from grade 7 right up to grade 12. We've also got videos. We've got, uh, we've got uh, resource materials. You can contact us directly. Check our website and contact us if you're liking. So like and subscribe. Inshallah, I hope we all can reach our desired outcome. Okay, so here we go. That was type number one. I hope you've all taken it, taken it down. Let's clear the frame. Let's do type number two. So we're now going on to type two. Right. So now I tell you f of x. Let's write it in terms of f of x. And now I tell you x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x minus 4. All right. Or, yeah, over x minus 4. There we go. Find f dash x. The question just says differentiate or find f dash x for four marks. In your answer, what is the difference between type 1 and type 2? Zain, what's the difference between type 1 and type 2? Type 1, you had one term in the denominator. How many terms have you got here? Good, you got two terms. When you got two terms in the denominator, what's the rule in algebra to simplify? Factorize, am I right? You've got to factorize and cancel. All right, so let's, let's simplify the before part. So now we're going to break that up. That's a trinomial. So that's going to be x minus 4, x plus 2. Right? I hope you guys don't know how to factorize. If you don't know how to factorize, you are in big trouble. Right? So make sure that your factorization is on point. That and that will cancel out. So we're only left with f of x is equal to x plus 2. Now we differentiate. We say, therefore, f dash x. So now we differentiate each term. So 1 times 1 is 1. x to the power 0 is 1. And what's the derivative of a constant? 0. So your answer is just 1. And that's your final answer. Are we all okay with that? Yasin, we okay with that? 
Right, let's do type number three. This was quite simple. I hope you've taken it down. Let's go on to type number three. So put the heading there, type three, and the differentiation is what you could see in the exam. Let's put it like this. Let's say dx. Let's give it to you in this format. Let's say two over five square root x minus the cube root of x plus two over x. All right, differentiate. So in your answer, A for answer, that's your question, here's your answer. We still write dx because we're simplifying it. So it's two over five. You, I said get rid of the unknowns from the denominator, not your knowns from the denominator. So this is x to the half, we'll come up to the top as x to the power minus a half, minus x to the power, your inside power divided by your outside root. So it's 1 over 3 plus 2. X to the plus 1 will come up to the top as x to the minus 1. Now we've got it in a straight line. Now we differentiate. So now this is equal to. The minute, don't go and say d, dx. Don't go and make up your own formats. The minute you see it in this format, you say equal to. That will inform your marker that you are applying the power rule. Negative times positive is a negative. Uh, a half times 2 over 5, 2 and 2 will cancel. You'll be left with 1 over 5. X minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. Minus 1 over 3. X to the power. A third minus 1 is minus 2 over 3. Minus 2 X. 1 times 2 is 2. X to the power. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Now write it with positive powers. Minus 1 over 5. X to the power 3 over 2. Minus 1 over 3 x to the power 2 over 3 minus 2 over x squared. And there we go. That's your final answer with positive powers. I hope you're smiling. I hope some of you who are writing, who, who have prepped already for the exam and are trying these examples out that we are doing and you're getting them right, I hope it's motivating you, keeping your spirits up in order to, um, to be happy that, you know what, you know you're going to be getting your distinction in your exam. Okay. So I hope you're getting them right. We're now going to do the last type, type number four. We're now going to do type. So these are the general types. Obviously, there might be other examples, but you'll be working through your past papers and whatever the case may be. And you'll be doing your high, higher order questions, sitting with your teachers, working through national papers, IEB papers, DOE papers, Sakai papers. Get as much information as you can. But as long as you're understanding how the processes are unfolded. Okay. So let's go on to type number four. Let's go on to type number four. I know I talk too much. I get paid to talk, bra. <laughs> I get paid to talk. I don't get paid to shut up. Okay, let's do the last one. Let's say dx, right? Let's say four times the square root of x minus the cube root of x all squared for five marks. Differentiate. Do you want to try this one out on your own? Bismillah, go for it. Knock yourselves out. After this, we're going to go on to equations of tangents. We're going to do, be doing the cubic graph. And for optimization, I know you guys get many formulas for volume, for total surface area. I'm going to give you one formula you can use for all shapes. I will always show you the shortest humanly possible way to do a problem. Okay, so where we can save marks and save time, that's where we're going to be doing. Score marks and save time. Not <laughs> save marks. Right, score marks and save time. Okay, so I will always show you the shortest, best, humanly possible way to do it. If there's a shorter way, if there's a better way, please let us know. We'll even employ your way of doing it. Okay, but over our 20 years of experience, you know what? I'm an impatient person by nature. So I like to get to the answer, to the destination in the shortest, quickest possible way, uh, humanly possible way. Okay, so I hope you guys are all still logged on. You're staying online. You haven't disconnected. You haven't DC'd yet. I hope we're coming down at 5G speed. I hope your downloading speed, your mental capacity is at 5G at the moment. Mr. Kota, I'm G having time. fun. Are this, you having I'm fun? having fun. I'm having fun. I'm definitely learning something. So we've got a question from Zaidan Samodin. Can you yes, leave your right. answer with negative exponents? Let's not, answer. Not, not encouraged. Not en you see what? They changed the, the rules. Uh, not the actual rule, but they changed the format. 
Do you know that up to a certain point, I think up to about 2005, 2006, they wanted you to put the answer back into third form. Then they dropped the third form and they said, okay, leave it with positive exponents. Now some of the teachers or some of the papers leave them with negative exponents. It's not encouraged. So try your best. Try your best to leave your answer with positive exponents. Just to ensure that you leave no room for them to subtract not even one mark. So try and make sure. You don't need to put it back into third form, but try your best to give your answer with positive exponents. Okay, I'm sure you must be done with this one already. I'm sure you guys are done with it. Are you guys jamming already? Are you vibing with me, guys? Are you vibing? And I hope we don't have any trolls on here because you know what? It's being screened and you'll be kicked out. So <laughs> let's get started. All right, so now we got dx. Let's break this up. Now, remember, what we have to do is this. This is going to be 4x to the power half minus x to the power a third uh, squared. All right. Now, dx. Now, remember, we're squaring a binomial. So, it's like x plus h squared. So, we square the first term. I'm going to get 16x to the power. Remember, I'm raising a power to a power. So, I multiply. A half times 2 is 1. Right, then you multiply the 2 inside the brackets and you times it by 2. So that's minus 4 times 2 is minus 8. X to the power. Uh, you're multiplying. So when you multiply and bases are the same, you add the powers. So a half plus a third is 5 over 6. You can check it on your calculator. Now you square the second term. That gives you plus X to the power. A third times 2 is 2 over 3. And that's how you expand your brackets. Guys in house, did you get that right? I'm going to clap you if you didn't get it right. you there. <laughs> Good. Right. This is equal to 1 times 16 is 16 minus 8 times 5 is 40 over 6 is 20 over 3. X to the power. 5 over 6 minus 1. Don't forget, subtract 1. Cut the head off. Power times coefficient minus 1 from power. Make sure the head is off. Minus 1 from the power. So 5 over 6 minus 1 is minus 1 over 6 plus 2 over 3, x to the power, 2 over 3 times 1 is 2 over 3, 2 over 3 minus 1 is minus a third. And here we go, positive exponents, guys, 16 minus 20 over 3, x to the power 1 over 6, plus 2 over 3, x to the power a third. There we go, game over. Game over, brah, game over. Five marks for you. You happy with your five marks? So you got your, you got your first principles, five marks. You got your derivative, eight marks. Let's now go into equations of tangents. Let's start dallying with the equations of tangents. All right. So we start messing around with that. There are about three or four types there as well. You time, time, my brothers, time. We are fighting for time. It's 11 o'clock already. You know what? We're going to go for break. Chances are when we come back from break, we're going to continue with calculus. Right, I want to finish it. I don't want to leave no stone unturned. Okay, so I don't want to say, okay, you know what? We set 45 minutes aside for this topic, but now uh, Mr. Kota only did the intro to it. So give us the meat, give us, he's throwing us the bones. No, 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 no. We need to eat the nyamas. We need to eat the nyamas. All right, so let's go into the nyama. Let's talk about the equation of tangent. Now you know that if that is a parabola or any graph, and a tangent touches at one point. At that point, you know, if that is graph F and that is graph G, you know two things very critical to remember. F of X is equal to G of X. So the two graphs are equal. But not only are the two graphs equal, F dash X is also equal to G dash X. So F dash X is equal to the M of your other graph. So not only are the two equations equal, the two gradients are all are also equal. And that's going to help us when we formulate our simultaneous equations. Equation number one, equation number two to solve for A and B in the question. I know you're all smiling. You're waiting for that to come there. Because that's what you've been seeing in all your papers. In fact, you even saw it now in your prelims. I got your prelim papers here. Okay. So guys, even if you need more uh, help with this, please feel free. You can contact us, uh, uh, contact OCAF to get my phone number. You can contact us. We can even private workshop you guys in private groups or whatever afterwards. Review this, replay this. You guys still need help. Remember, we're there to assist you. This is what this is my game. 
I don't teach at a school. This is our institute. I do this seven days a week. 360, no, not 365. I take a month holiday at the end of the year. So 335 days a year. This is all I do. Eat, sleep, and dream. Man. I, I can't use, I, you know what way I was going with it. Uh, eat, sleep, and dream math. Otherwise, I'm going to get a red card. Right. But in any case, let's start with type number one. Right. So we've got that. Function equal function. Gradient equal gradient. Let's clear the frame. Guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the session. Right. Click like. Click subscribe. Put your comments up there on Facebook, on, on, on our live stream. Tell Okaf if you guys want more of these sessions. Let us know. We'll give you more. So tell right. me, Mr. Kauta, how long Please have you guys. been doing this? How long have you been... Uh, what doing workshops? learners with 20 Max years 20 YouTube. years 1.6 million learners to date they are 1 million 1 million 601 learner okay learners that are now being in this but and, and we've taken learners from below 30 percent to above 80 percent in a very short period of time three weeks three weeks is only imagine if we can do the whole syllabus in two days imagine what three weeks can do for you but in any so case, tell well, me, anyway. on the Zero. subject of calculus and, and mathematics, Mr. Kota, why yeah. is it important to do very well as part of your final examination in mathematics? Why? I mean, let us just define the why there. Yeah, to understand the why, ask your ex. No, I'm like... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, Matt's only deals with X and Ys. You know what? I divorced my ex. Don't ask why. Right. But in any case, we're talking about why math is so important because mathematics, especially if you're going into the engineering fields, if you're going into the computer science fields, if you're going into the medical fields, it teaches you logic. It teaches you to apply processes and it teaches you to think out of the box, to attach variables to real life scenarios. I mean, a simple situation. You got Mr. A is going out so you got three people you got a who's a guy you got b and c who's a girl who two separate ladies so a is going out with b and a is also going out with c a is a problem a is a problem am i right so we need to factorize so when you want to factorize and you want to pull out who's the problem a is the problem so we take out a so we take out a he's the common factor and then we left with B plus C. So in a simple scenario, this is how you can model mathematics. You got, yeah, I, I think you know where I'm going with this. Okay. Let's, let's get back to math. I'm just going to delete this. I promise you I can talk crap for days, right? So if you guys yes, don't... Yes, Mr. Kauter, let well, us be want... reminded that this yeah, is yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. the audience. And we've got a yellow card for you, but oh, yeah, yeah, I know I'm already on a yellow card. But they're going to kick me out. I got to watch my, I, I, I okay. got to lose some custom. We will get that. Ali from the Okaf accounts department to take over. Yeah? <laughs> but look, we've got some positive I'm going to be feedback. trouble, guys. I'm going to be trouble. I'm, I, I'm raw. I'm sarcastic. I was born sarcastic. I'm, I'm raw. I'm on the score. Anyway, I'm being civil. You can see me. I'm being yeah. civil. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yes. I've been yes. on medication. No problem. No right. problem. I'm on my so, because of feedback from Zaidan Samodin, she says yeah. we want more. So, in your yep. comments below, let us know if you are enjoying the session. What is your feedback? Give us some encouragement. You know, this is your I show. I wish I this could see each you. one of them. I promise you, my love for mathematics extends to the love to the learners. I promise you, I love my learners. I wish I could see each one of you, and we all build up relationships. The people who I've tutored 20 years ago today are doctors, today are lawyers. My student is my lawyer. My student is my doctor. My student are my IT people. They are my, all my prodigies are all the people. So if any of you become the minister of finance after this for the country, I'm your man. I'm your man. I'm your right-hand man. Uh, give me the okay. key to the safe. All okay. right, let's I get back. We, oh, we're getting okay, some I'm love talking. here. So keep the interaction flowing because otherwise myself and Mr. Kota might just fall asleep behind you. So your well, comments, your feedback, and your interaction is our oxygen to ensure that we have a... Listen, if you guys want me to stop talking so much of crap, just tell me, listen, okay, enough now. Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm, okay, there's it, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Right, let's go. Serious face. If f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x, find the equation of the tangent the equation of the tangent 
2 f of x at x equal 1. 5 marks. Okay, in our answer, that is the question. This is the answer. I know the Cape Town, Cape Town people are saying, your mistake, K. You don't be boring. Slat it, Mr. K. They left me, bro. Slat it. Durban Owens wants to say, away, Bali. <laughs> dala de, dala, dala, dala de, Bali. Okay, let's start. Now, if f of x is equal to 3, so now the equation of a tangent, and tangent is y is equal to mx plus c. So the first thing that we do, we need x and y. We need a point and we need the gradient. We need the gradient and we need a point. But we only got x, we don't have y. Right, so let's get y. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to say f of 1. Right, is 3 into 1 squared plus 2 into 1. So this is equal to 3 plus 2, which is equal to 5. So that means our point is 1 and 5. So we got the point. We don't have the gradient. Now we find the m. So we do f dash x to find the general gradient. Firstly, we're going to find the gen, g-e-n, general gradient. f dash x is equal to 6x plus 2. Right? Power rule. 2 times 3, 6x plus 2. If you don't know that, you're going to fail. Don't even write the exam. Now we're going to find the specific gradient. Now to find m. So we say f dash. We now plug the, only the x in there, 1. All right, so it's 6 into 1 plus 2. 6 plus 2 is how much? 8. A by, by sub is 8. All right, so we got m is 8. m is 8 and we got a point. So therefore, the equation, now I use, I know you guys use y is equal to mx plus c, you can, but I like to use the one from analytics, y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. I smart it. I smart using this one. I smart it. Bro. So 1 minus 5. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, bro. M is 8 into x minus 1. Because I know I'm faulty. My wife tells me that every day. Well, uh, I'm like this all the time. You guys don't know the level of faultiness. Allah save me. 8x minus 8. So y is equal to 8x minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3. And there we go. That is the equation. I know some of you are screaming, yay, I'm getting it right. Did you get it right? No, you're going to fail. All right. So that is type number one, where we're finding the equation of the tangent. Now, this is where we have to find the equation. What if the, hey, Baba, what if it's given to you? What if the, the equation of the tangent is given and you need to find the original equation of the function? So let's do type two. Let's do the reverse. Everything got forward and it's got the reverse. Okay, we are now going to do the reverse. I hope you've taken all this down. I hope I'm not moving too fast. I know I talk fast. What am I going to do? I can't stop that down. So what maybe we can do? just pause for a moment, like one minute, to allow Gina. the learners to take down this over here and then we can clear that slide. How's that, no Mr. Kota? Problem. No problem. No problem. We give them 60 seconds. Okay. Take it down. Scrave, Baba. Yes, we are going into the higher order ones. We are going now. Bilal. Bilal, we are going there. You're loving the energy. Thanks, Mikado. Hey, what a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Declan. Declan Timol. I know you, bro. I know you, bro. I know you, Declan Timol. Declan Timol, you are from NKR. You are from the NKR. <laughs> What a cracker. What a cracker. JC Lee winner so far. It's helped me big time. Watch this. Watch this. If you thought that was fun, check this one out. Let's dial up. Yo, Mr. Case, let us with the, with the higher order ones there, my bro. Don't be so. If f of x is equal to a, oh, let's, yeah, let's say ax cubed, if ax cubed, plus bx squared minus 8 has a tangent. This is a higher order question. Has a tangent given by g of x equals 2x minus 4 at x equal 1. Find a and b. Find the values of a and b. And there we go. That one there, we give you six marks for that. You want to try that one out? 
You want to dollar that what? Come. Shesha, Baba, Shesha. Scrape, young, scrape. So now, remember, this is where that, that concept is going to come. Function equal function, gradient equal gradient. So I'm going to give you guys a template. I'm going to break it up for you guys. Lecker. So we do function equal function. We do function equal function. And we do gradient equal gradient. Equation number one. Equation number two. Right, I know I'm talking like that girl on Instagram, you know, when they're talking about those hol holiday places. You know that little girl? This is the kitchen. This is the bathroom. Oh, shame, she's so sweet. This is the bathroom. This is where my daddy went. My daddy, my daddy and my mommy. Cape Town, hey, Cape Town, you in the house. Right, function equal function. So now we're going to go AX cubed plus BX squared minus 8 equals 2x minus 4. That is function equal function. We're equating the two functions. And we've got the x. How much is the x? It's 1. So a into 1 cube plus b into 1 squared minus 8 equals 2 into 1 minus 4. So now we've got a plus b minus 8 equals 2 minus 4. a plus b equals 2 minus 4 is minus 2 plus 8 a plus b equals 6 okay now that is equation number one let us now go into equation number two equation number two is the gradient so the gradient of this is the derivative so let us just go f dash x so 3 a x squared plus 2 b x right 3ax squared plus 2bx, that will fall away, is equal to the m of this graph. Now, it's not equal to 0. Only for minimum or maximum, it's equal to 0. Here, it's equal to 2. And we got a, 3a. We got x is 1, 2, plus 2b into 1 equals 2. So 3a plus 2b equals 2. That's equation number 2. We are now going to do... Simultaneous, A equals 6 minus B. So 3 into 6 minus B plus 2B equals 2. 3 times 6, 18 minus 3B plus 2B equals 2. Minus 3B plus 2B minus B equals 2 minus 18 is minus 16. So B is equal to 16, b is equal to 16, a is equal to 6 minus 16, a is equal to minus 10. And there we go, game over. You problem solved. Lots of writing. Just remember, function equal function, gradient equal gradient. Equation one, equation two, solve simultaneously. Okay, so... Guys, if there are teachers also on here, if you guys are liking what we do and you want to get our videos and you want to get our program and whatever, we've got uh, video packages on DVD. We've got DVD packages great, from grade 7 right up to grade 12. Contact OCAF, contact us, uh, kwayinstitute.co.za, or you can even contact me on my WhatsApp number, 081-706-3986. You can contact Hassanain. Hassanain's contact details are all there. If you guys need to get all of us, we are here to assist the country. The country. We are here to assist you. Okay. Make you get your distinction. Your distinction. We are now going to be talking. So that's why Skype number two. I know I'm, I'm talking while you guys write. So just take it down. Don't only listen to me. Scrape. Right. As a name, can we go till five today? I think they, ask them. Ask them. How many of you want to go till five o'clock today? I bet you 99% of them are going to say, Mr. K, go till eight o'clock tonight. 8 o'clock. I'm game. You game. Hamza, you game. You'll sit here the whole night. All night. You see, my guys here also in studio say all night. Asanay, you okay there, bro? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. We're good to go. I'm We're good to go. Change. We're good to go. I don't mind sitting with them. I promise you, you know what we did one year, Hassanay? Yes. You know, I had the matrix, the grade, matrix and grade 11s were writing on a Monday, man. So we needed to do two workshops in a weekend. We started Friday night with grade 11s. From 8 o'clock at night till 4 o'clock in the morning, I did grade 11s, paper one. We had 200 learners. 
They went home for breakfast. They went home for breakfast. Uh, no, no. They went home to sleep on Saturday morning. I went home for breakfast. I came back. We had grade 12. I went back for grade 12, paper one. We did from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They went home to sleep. I went home for supper. I came back. I had grade 11s, paper two. We started in the evening. 8 o'clock in the evening till 4 o'clock the next morning with the paper two, grade 11. They went home for breakfast. Uh, they went home to sleep. I went home for breakfast. Came back. We did that non-stop till Monday morning. 72 hours non-stop maths. I'm still alive. And see, nothing wrong with me. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Kota. Let me right. give you a chance just to uh, relieve your throat. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Please, can we not go yes. for break now? Can we not cut yeah. for break? Because I'm just okay. in the heat of it right now. Okay. So we've got a yeah. question from Shamil Mullah. Yes, Mr. I Kaisa. saw the question. So sorry sorry to cut about you local word. minimum and maximum. Okay. So we got a yes. question from Shamil. Could we yes. possibly get an explanation on how to find the minimum and the maximum values, please? That is the next question. Guys, hold your horse. I will leave no stone unturned. I will leave no stone unturned. You have my word. I've never lied to you so far. Okay. Ah, the grind. Don't stop. Hey, Hamza Doda. Hey, welcome. Shifa. Hey, it is perfect. All right, let's start. So here goes type three. Watch this. Check this one out. That's why I told you I'm in the grind. I'm in the grind now. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. My feet, my, okay, my backside is a little bit sore, but it's, it's fine. I'm on fire. My seat is hot. F of Easy, X. boy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you check the steam coming out of my ball there? <laughs> right. If, <laughs> if F of X... Check this one out, guys. If F of X is equal to AX cubed plus BX squared minus 8, check this out, has a local minimum, has a local minimum or maximum, right? At the point P, 2, and 12, find A and B for 8 marks or 6 marks. Let's give you 6 marks for that. Let's see if you guys, that's a higher order question, guys. That's a higher order question. Now, obviously, remember something, I can't only jump into the higher because we've got some below 30 percenters around, so i got to start. I got to butter you easily. I got to spread it on light first before we start. We go into the boxing ring and then we start fighting Muhammad Ali. June, July. Chisampam. Wabon. Chisampam. Klaus Shapa. Zokshaya, Baba. Zokshaya. We are shiring Mets. What do you say for Mets in Zulu and Sutu? I. Uh, 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 Dipalo. Easy palo, easy palo is mathematics. Right, come, let's see. I know I'm talking uh, crap. Come, Dala, don't wait for me. I'm just talking to keep the thing going. You guys slut it. Where's my Red Bull? Bring the Red Bull. Sure, I need some oxygen in the lungs, if you know what I mean. I'm, I'm just going just now. Mr. Kota, we've got a Goodbye. question from Huzaifa. Can we yes. do ones with minimum and maximum? Yes, yes. This is the one with minimum now. Local minimum. We're going to do, be doing the gradient. Gradient concept will always be used for these types of questions. Yes, yes, always. Always, Kirti. Right, so now, local minimum. Local minimum or local maximum. Now, you know. You know for minimum or maximum. For minimum or for maximum, you know your derivative is always equal to zero. That, remember that. Remember that. So let's first start now. Firstly, you need a function equation and you need a gradient equation. Equation one, equation two. So the function equation, you plug and play. You just put this value directly in there. So 12 equals A into 2 cubed plus B into 2 squared minus 8. Right. So 12 equals 8A plus 4B minus 8. 8A plus 4B is equal to 20. I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are having here in studio. I'm loving it. You know what? 
Yes, like I'm having so much of fun. It's like the first time I'm doing it. I'm, my first workshop that I'm ever having. That's how much, how much I love maths. I do it every day of my life, but I teach it and I love it with the same passion as if I'm doing it for the first time. So now we divide everything here by four. So now we got 2A plus B is equal to 20 divided by four is five. That's equation number one. Now your gradient equation, you're going to do your derivative. So it's going to be 3AX squared plus 2BX write your derivative, 8 will fall away, is equal to 0 for minimum or maximum. And you got your, you got your x. x is how much? Good. 3 into 2 squared, uh, 3a into 2 squared. I might sometimes make calculation errors or whatever. I try my best not to make mistakes. But I'm human, Baba. I'm human. I'm not a computer. We will try our best not to make any errors. We will leave no margin for any errors. We will try with laser-like precision. Right, A is 2. Let me shut up. Right, so that's 4 times 3. That is 12A plus 4B equals 0. I hope you guys are not falling off to sleep. And I hope this has been a good spend of a grade 12 morning. So now let us go here. Let us say 2A plus B equals 5. So now we're going to say B is equal to 5 minus 2A. So now we're going to go 12A plus 4 into 5 minus 2A. 5 minus 2A is equal to 0. So 12a plus 20 minus 8a equals 0. 12 minus, a, uh, 12 minus 8 is 4a. Ne? Yeah. 4a is equal to minus 20. a is equal to minus 5. Yo, I made this question up. This is called tutor's luck. God loves me. I get the answer. We get whole numbers. Minus 5. Put minus 5 into here. b is equal to 5 minus 2 into a is minus 5. So I'm showing you processes, guys. These are the processes that you do. So you get 5 plus 10, which is equal to 15. I hope I'm right in my calculations. Right. And there we go, guys. How's our numbers looking, Abdullah uh, Hassanain? I hope they're telling all their friends. Guys, if, you, if, if, if some of your friends are not on, tell your friends, phone them up, tell them, hey, you are missing a session of a lifetime. Right. Yeah, there's just something that I want to add, Mr. Kota. I see uh, most of our our participants are logging on via YouTube. That is good. It saves a lot of data. But kindly, during our intermission, let your friends know that they, and you can connect via Facebook and as well as uh, YouTube. So you can just direct your friends. Um, they could definitely benefit from this program. So you can connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and I think our website would be the best way to find out more information about how to connect. So there we go, okafsa.org.za, that is the OCAF website. So all of the videos, all of the information is on there. You guys we want are a break on now. Instagram, no, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook as well. Right so far. As I mean, just let's ask all our participants, do you guys want a break now or are we on fire? Can I start firing now? Can we go into the cubic graph? Let's hear from our uh, participants on a break or carry on. Okay, so just for the benefit of the participants that, look, we were going to break now at 11.30 to take a comfort break. So you can stretch your legs because like, you know, the session is going to go on until about half past three. So let Till us five. know if you want to have, have a comfort break, you want to stretch your legs, you want to get some refreshments and then power up. So then we, we can uh, proceed or do you want us to carry on and then we can have a comfort break uh, a little bit later on. Okay, so there we go. Um, we've got some feedback coming on here. How's the comments coming in? Fire, fire, hey, fire, no break. Hey, you check, carry on. As the name, where do you see this? We slide all. Yeah, subhanallah, no break, no break, no break. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, Bali, just carry on there. Let's just carry on. All right, let's start. Let's okay, Mr. Start. Kota, it's hey. just the one thing we're getting some feedback. I like your pace, but maybe we can just take it like a notch down for the benefit okay. of some that are a little bit in the struggle zone. All right. Okay, but let us know. We're good. We're good. Dlamini, are we okay? Give us a thumbs up there. Dlamini, some care. 
Carry on, Safia Abu Huraira, carry on. Mashallah, thanks for all of that. Yeah, maybe we can even hit it 12.30 break. Okay, Zeke, what are you talking about? Uh, what are you confused about? Are you confused about this question or are you confused about the whole program or are you confused about the breaks? Just let us know. Okay, but I'm carrying on now. Let us go on to the cubic graph. Right, let's start with the cubic graph. Right, now we're going to do this, how to sketch and how to find the equations of the cubic function. Right, so put the heading there, the cubic graph. So let's start with the cubic graph. So if I tell you f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3. Right. Sketch the graph fully, label it, your intercepts, stationary points, point of inflection. For which values will it be increasing? We're going to be talking about all of that. For which, which values will it be increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down? We'll be talking all of this in this graph. Right. So let's do, we need to sketch. So the first thing you need to do, right, you say let x equal to 0. So let x equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3. Right. Now we're going to do the factor and remainder theorem to get our, so we got our y-intercept. So now I need to get my x-intercepts, right? So now we're going to say, we're going to try f of 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 5 into 1 plus 3. That is equal to 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5 minus 5 is 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. We must get 0 as a remainder. So now we got our first factor. So x is equal to 1. So our first x-intercept is x is equal to 1. All right. Let us know. Score us out of 10, guys. Out of 10, what do you think the session is uh, so far? So far, 10 being the best. Zero being the worst. Now, don't be a troll. Come on, guys. Let it fuel me also to give you the best also. So I hope you guys are understanding, you're following, and you're enjoying the session. Give us a score out of 10 and send it through to OCAF. Okay, so there we go. The first thing we do, the first thing we do, let x equal to zero. That's step number one. Step number two, we use f of one. If this one doesn't work, you'll try minus one. If that doesn't work, use two, minus two. Sometimes try half, minus half. You must get zero as a remainder. Now we use step number three, what we call synthetic division. Now watch here. Many of you don't know this. Now let me show you synthetic division. We got our first factor, one, x equal one. So we put the one outside. Now you put your coefficients in descending powers inside, your coefficient. So power three is one, there's it, one, one, minus five, and three. All right? We bring up the first one. These are our coefficients, 1x cubed plus 1x squared minus 5x plus 3. If there's no x or no x squared, you'll put 0 in its place. We're dividing this into that. When we go this way, when we come across, we multiply. Whatever answer we get there, we add to the next term. So what, what's the process? What's the process, Hamza? Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. So let's go. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 5 is minus 3. Minus 3 times 1. We're just repeating the process. When we go across, we multiply. Then we add. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Plus 3 is 0. You must get 0 at the end. Now, if you, there's your trinomial. There's your answer there on the top. 1x squared plus 2x minus 3. We factorize that equal to 0, x, x, 3, 1, plus, minus, x is equal to, obviously, x plus 3 will equal to 0, x is equal to minus 3, x minus 1 equals to 0, x is equal to 1. So now this graph has got x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to 1. That means this graph, just to show you its shape, the graph will look like this. It's only got two x-intercepts. It doesn't have three x-intercepts. All right, so take this down. I'll repeat this process one more time for everybody, just so that you, you, you understand it. All right, while they're taking it down, yes, you get full marks, Hamza. You don't lose. They don't give you marks for long division. Long division will help you to fail. Okay? 
<laughs> Don't do long division. Derivative of 10 of X. Ah, Dominic Bell. Ah, away, brah. Where are you from, Dominic? Tell us where you're from. Love to meet you all. Maybe one day, inshallah, we'll have a thousand learner workshop at some point. Ah, but, or maybe we'll meet up sometime. I'd love to meet all of you. Find out who you are. If you guys see me in Durban, in the Durban, in January, come and say hello. Say, hey, Mr. K, we attended your workshop. How are you, brah? I'm so I'm Dominic. Mr. K, How's our I rating coming in there? What's the name? I How's our rating coming in? I definitely want to attend one of your contact events because I know that you always got like a very good vibe with the learners during the workshop. It's oh, a great the workshops vibe. are fun. On but, stage, you know, gotta, yeah. With this online workshop, you know, I've been also enjoying this uh, vibe that's been on air, you know, and it's been a two way street between the learners um, and yourself. And I'm really feeling that energy. So, we really hope that as long as we're vibing, bra, as long as we're vibing, as long as we're all seeing maths from the same pair of eyes, that's it. Everybody must be on the same page. Let's go back. Let's go back. I'm going to redo this process for you, right? So let me just go here, undo, 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 instead of using my eraser. You know, those digital things, bra. They, they can give stories here. But never mind. Here we go. All right. We're doing the synthetic division again, right? So let me put my pen, my marker, black. There we go. Black is beautiful. So we just go there. We put one. Our first factor that we found, we put it out. We got one, one, minus five, and three. Right. Day look. As a day look, my bro. Right. We bring this one up. This first one will always come up. What's the process? When we go across, we multiply, and then we add. So one times one is one. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we repeat. Repeat process. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 5 is minus 3. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Right, Hamza? Right. So what do we have here? 1x squared. There's, there's your answer on the top. That's a trinomial. 1x squared plus 2x minus 3. Agreed? And now we factorize that. Guys, you guys have been doing this so much in the year. I don't need to talk like a skull pad. I don't need to talk like a tortoise. Right? You guys know what I'm saying. Seriously. Well, I swear, if you guys don't know the topics and you don't know what I'm doing now, right at two weeks before your final exam, ah, you are in big trouble, Baba. You are in big trouble. X is equal to minus 3 or X is equal to 1. Right. So we got our Y intercept. We got our Y intercept. We got our two X intercepts. What are we short of? Turning points. We short of stationary points or turning points and we are short. Please, guys. Point of inflection. P-O-I, point of inflection. You must show it on your graph. Ah, let's go. Maybe I need to do some exercise here. Just flex the arms. <laughs> That's in your laughing, bro. You're laughing. You think this is a stand-up comedy show, Baba? <laughs> You'll see who'll be laughing in the exam. <laughs> that mess exam. Counter, we've got a request from... J.C. Lee, winner. Yes. Sir, can we redo the last question? A very um, kind this of one. request. This one or the that previous, previous one? one? The previous one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we will do it. But uh, can I just... Fi let's finish this one up first, right? Just make a note of it. As a name, you'll just keep a note of it, right? And then you'll ask her, which is... A I'm making up these questions. Although these are exam questions, I know it from memory. I don't even remember what's the last question, but you guys will tell me what is it. I think it was AX cubed plus BX squared minus 8. Nah. Uh, has a local minimum at P, 2, and 12. Find the values of A and B. I, I, I'm not so dumb, Baba. I, I will remember. I will remember. Okay, let's go. So now we need SPs and POI, right? So now, relax, take a chill pill. Let's now get our stationary points. That's where we use derivative. That's where we use derivative. So now I'm just erasing all of this here. So now we want SPs. Wait, 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 wait. Let me this huh, Google Meet whiteboard gives you such a small eraser. Yes, yes, man. They are playing games here. They don't know. We are burning this thing. We are burning it. 
I think the system will, uh, Allah forbid, but the system, I hope it don't crash. But. So minus 5x, right. So now we want SPs, stationary points. So now we're going to go F dash X. So that's where we're going to use derivative. Right, so power rule here, 3x squared plus 2x minus 5, right. I don't need to tell you how we got that. You know, power rule here. Now we know for minimum or maximum derivative is always equal to zero. Let's factorize that. Guys, if you don't know how to factorize, don't write your exam. 3x and x, 5 and 1, plus and minus. x is equal to minus 5 over 3, or x is equal to 1. Now we take this and we put it back into original. So now we're going to go f of minus 5 over 3 to get the y value. And that you're going to get 9,48. And then you're going to go f of 1, and you're going to get 0. So your two SPs is going to be minus 5 over 3 and 9,48. And then your other point is going to be 1 and 0. Those are your SPs. Now we need our point of inflection, our point of concavity. Right? Concave up, concave down. Second derivative. That's the only time we use second derivative. Right? Second derivative, F. Now we know F dash X is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. f double dash x is equal to 6x plus 2 equal to 0. 6x is equal to minus 2. x is equal to minus 2 over 6 is minus a third. We take the minus a third, we plug it back into there. I think we get 4,74. Double check it for me. I think so. No, I don't think so. I know so. It's 4,74, yeah, it's right. Now, guys, first derivative, another word, I just want to tell you, another word for first derivative is speed. And another word for speed is velocity. Why? Do you remember, those of you who do science, ms to the minus 1. You subtract one from the power. So that's speed. Point of inflection, second derivative. If ms to the minus 2. And what is that called? Acceleration. The point of acceleration and the point of speed. Okay. Take this down. Take this down. Let's sketch the graph. Those of you who are done with this, you can start sketching the graph. Then we're going to start answering questions on the graph. For which values is it increasing? For which values is it decreasing? For which values is it concave up? For which values of x is it concave down? Now, guys, I can continue with this. I'm telling you there's so much to teach you guys, but our time is so limited. And I love you guys. And I, I want to teach you everything. I don't want to leave anything out. I, don't, I want you, when you your take home or your take away from the session must be your... I'm telling you, we don't want to stop. So we'll see as the whole program develops. I promise you, I'm here for you. Even if you tell me tomorrow, carry on till 5 o'clock, carry on till 6 o'clock, carry on till sir, 10 o'clock tomorrow night. G bye. Sir, so that's the best thing that I can do to get your attention because damn, Mr. K is on fire. So we've got a question here from uh, Mr. Lamini. Yes, you, you get full, full marks. marks. I see the question. Full okay. marks. Full marks. Full marks. You don't even need to show that in your calculations, uh, that, that whole, unless, unless they say show, but I've never come across a paper, so you can just put your marks there, put it in there and put all your, factorize it there and you'll get full marks for it. Okay, this is from JC Lee Winner. Can you just do the last question? Was that the previous one? Am I right? That's correct. Not this one. It was that other one with that local That's minimum correct. and local maximum. That's correct. Okay, but don't stress. Don't stress. Let me finish this one up. Let me finish this one up. All right? So clear frame. I'm clearing the frame. Let's now go and sketch the graph, guys. So let's sketch the graph. Come on. Internet, talk to me. Right. So now we've got, we've got that. And we've got that. Your y was equal to 3. x was equal to 1. Or x was equal to minus 3. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. 
Your turning point, your SP, your one was at one. So you put a dotted line. So not only is it your x-intercept, it's also your SP. And then your other turning point was minus 5 over 3. Now, minus 5 over 3 is minus 1, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, which is minus 1, comma, devil. 1, comma, 6, 7. All right. So 1, comma, 6, 7. So that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, comma, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 is there. Shaitan. 6, 6. Triple 6. And then you've got 9, comma, 4, 8. That's minus 5 over 3. And that's 9, comma, 4, 8. And now... Because the A value is positive, it's an increasing function. So it goes from the bottom. So you go up, up, up. Now listen to what I'm saying. Increasing, 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 stationary. Decreasing, 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 decreasing. Supposed to cut, but it's also your turning point. So it bounces off. And then your point of inflection was minus a third and 4,74. That's your POI. Please, guys, show your point of inflection. And put your coordinates in there. Minus a third and what's it? 4,74. Let's graph F. All right. Now, question number one. For which value or values of X? For which value or values of X is F increasing? All right. Now, whenever we're talking about increasing, we always look at the original graph. Right, now I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Come and show you a trick. When on any graph, if you want to find out where is the graph increasing or decreasing or greater than zero, right, where the derivative, where the gradient of it is increasing or decreasing, come and show you a little trick. All you do, you draw tangents. You can draw a tangent here. You draw a tangent there. And you draw a tangent on that side. Right, why do I draw tangents? How do you find the gradient of a straight line? Change in y over change in x. So if we're coming down, it's negative. If we're going that way, it's negative. Negative divided by negative is a? So that means it's positive here and it's positive that side. So therefore, it's increasing here, it's increasing there. If you did a gradient here, you'll be going down this way, negative over positive. And negative over positive is negative. So it's decreasing there. So where is it increasing? It's increasing from negative infinity up to your turning point. So it's increasing from negative for which values of x. So from negative infinity up to minus 5 over 3. Or from 1 to positive infinity. Now you can write it like this. Or you can say for x less than minus 5 over 3. Or for x greater than 1. You can write it in interval notation or inequality form both of them you'll still get full marks for it where is it decreasing if they ask you where is it decreasing it will be decreasing between your two turning points that's where it's got a negative gradient so minus five between minus five over three so x uh, less than one but greater than minus five over three x is an element of real numbers that's a one mark one mark question but these are marks you don't want to throw away in your exam. Now they're going to talk about concave, concavity. Whenever they talk about concavity, what are they talking about? Point of inflection. Second derivative. Okay, so I'm erasing this. Hmm? Masai? Hmm? No, no, no. I still want to do concavity. I'm still doing concavity. Right, so let's talk about concavity. Let's talk about concavity, concave up, concave down. For which value or values of x is the graph, let's say, concave up or concave down. Right, that's your second derivative. Now remember, what was our second derivative? Our first derivative f dash x was equal to, what was it? Was it 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Then our second derivative f double dash x was equal to 6x plus 2 equal to 0. 
So 6x was equal to minus 2, x was equal to minus 2 over 6, x was equal to minus a third. Now what does this mean? This means, this your derivative graph, this is your derivative, this is f dash x. f dash x is a parabola. And watch here, your two x intercepts are your two turning points, so minus 5 over 3. Your two turning points of your original are your two x intercepts of this graph. So it was minus 5 over 3 and 1. Now your turning point of your derivative, your turning point of your derivative is equal to your point of inflection. So it's a derivative of the derivative. Derivative means turning point. So your derivative of your derivative is your turning point. So this here is equal to minus a third. So that way is concave up and that way is concave down. So concave up, for which values of it would it be concave up? It would be from minus a third to positive infinity. And concave down from negative infinity up to minus a third. Please remember what I just told you now. Your two x sometimes in the exam, they're going to give you the derivative graph and they're going to say, give the stationary points of f of your original. All you do is you read these two values. The two x intercepts here are the two x values of your turning point of your original. So let's write that out. Your two x intercepts of your derivative is equal to the x values of your SP or your stationary point or your turning point of your original. Take that down. Remember. Remember that. Yo, the time is flying bright. It's quarter to 12 already. Imagine we're sitting here. What time? From quarter past 10. Quarter past 10. Quarter past 11. Quarter. We're sitting here one and a half hours already, guys. We sharp. Are we sharp? So that's how you sketch a graph. Let's quickly do how we, de how we determine equations and then we'll take... Guys, you know what? What's her name? Are we there? Yep. Are we there? Okay, let me just do that last question for... What was her name? Vina. Let's get that Vina. I think it was Vina. Ne? JC Lee. Yeah. Okay, so let me do that last question again and then let's take a... Can we take a five-minute bathroom break? We come back, and then I just want to finish up the functions. Then we go for a break. Then we come back, and we'll do optimization and finish up calculus. Can we do that? No problem, Mr. Kota. We are with you. I'm shaking my legs here. I think I need to pee. <laughs> yes, but Mr. Kota, you must be in mind Gee. that this, this is a marathon. You need to pace yourselves, you know? No, I so am. You Thinking it's I'm just liquids, it's just fluids here. Yeah, no, we also, you know, so you know, if you need a comfort break, we can relieve you for that comfort break after can this. You relieve one. me. Can you yes. relieve me after this one? Please. No, I can't Thank relieve you. you. You have to relieve yourself. <laughs> hey, hey, yellow card for you, bra. Yellow card. <laughs> we both on yellow cards. Right, let's delete. Let's clear the frame. What was that question? Let me see. What was that question again? I promise you, I think Hassanin talks more crap than me. He's just <laughs> trying to act professionally on, on online. F of X is equal to, he's acting all rah, rah, rah. <laughs> AX cubed plus BX squared minus 8. What it has a local minimum. Has a, now, uh, has a local minimum or maximum, right? So those of you who know it, you can go and take a comfort pee break now, right? Has a local minimum or local maximum. At the point, what was the point? At the point P2 and 12, ne? Yeah. Right. So the first thing, local minimum or maximum, your derivative must equal to zero. So, um, Miss Winner, we need a function equation and we need a gradient equation because we got two unknowns, A and B. So we're going to do simultaneous equations. So the function equation, plug and play, you substitute straight into there. So 12, that's your X, that's your Y. So 12 is equal to a into 2 cubed plus b into 2 squared minus 8. So 12 is equal to 8a plus 4b minus 8. So we got 8a plus 4b is equal to 8a plus 4b. 12 minus 8 is 4. I'm just dividing by 2. That's a plus. 
dividing by 4. So we're going to have 2a plus b is equal to 4 over 4 is 1. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we okay there? Let me just go there. Uh, just ask Ms. Wina, is she okay up till here? Can I put a tick here? If I put a tick here, it means that she understands until there what I've done. What's it? Josie Lee. Josie Lee. Jody Lee. JC Lee. JC Lee. No, no. Uh, JC Lee, tell where I put the tick. Do you understand what I've done there? Just answer me there. Just send a response so we know that you, you're still online. Do I get an affirmative there? Mr. Kauter, so what Gee. you can do, you, you are, we'll give you, I think we've got some feedback coming through. Uh, yeah. But it's not Ms. Mina, it's Sanala. Okay, then Y is equal, D equals, right. Now I'm going to explain to you why D is equal to zero. So let's go on to the, the gradient. Now for minimum or maximum, yeah, to answer, what, what's his name? Sabelo. Just Sinalo. put the last. Sinalo. Sinalo. Why D is equal to zero? Your derivative is equal to zero because at your turning point, at minimum or maximum, that's your derivative. Your derivative is a straight line and a straight line has got no gradient. So at minimum or maximum, your derivative is always equal to zero. So now we find the derivative here. 3ax squared plus 2bx is equal to zero because the question says has got a local minimum or local maximum. So 3a into x is 2 squared plus 2b into 2 is equal to zero. That would give me 4 times 3 is 12a plus 4b equals zero. Equation 1, equation 2, I think you know what to do from here. I'm not going to continue. You know what to do from here. Simultaneous equations solve for a and b. Does that answer your question, J.C. Lee? Does that answer your question? Uh, Christian Joy, give me a thumbs up. Give me it. Oh, ex excellent, Christian Joy. J.C. Lee. So now we know J.C. Lee is Christian Joy. Right, you're giving us enough joy here. In Please, if you don't understand something, ask me. I will do it. Uh, I will do it again and I will try my best to make sure that I will not leave any stone unturned that every single one of the 500, 600,000 learners understand every word I say absolutely. Okay, time to go in P. Can I take a five okay. minute? Five minute, five minute and I'm back. You can entertain them now. You can talk all your nonsense for five minutes. I'm going to... Okay, okay. salam alaikum. Goodbye. Five minutes. Okay. I, I'm just so muting we... my mic, right? I'm muting my mic. So we will be resuming shortly. Mr. Kauter just needs a, a five-minute uh, break. He's just going to the laboratory uh, to relieve himself. So feel free to give us some feedback via, um, via the comment section. How's the session been going so far? If you're having fun, if you're learning something, and if you love for us to conduct more of these sessions, kindly let us know in the comments below. Uh, so we will be resuming in the next five minutes with Mr. Kota. We're just taking a brief comfort break. And uh, we really appreciate your, your feedback thus far. It's been very good. Connect with us. Give us your feedback via Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, like us on Instagram, on Twitter. Tweet us some of your feedback. And soon we will be going into... At 12.30, we'll be going for a lengthy break. That will be about 30 minutes. So all of this information uh, and these sessions, you can find uh, this information on the OCAP SA uh, website. Please remember that these sessions are live streamed via YouTube and Facebook. So the moment that we are finished with these sessions, this live stream will be available on the OCAF website. So let's go through to some of your questions. So we got some feedback there from Zaidan said, want another session next week? Oh, that's good. Carl Chetty says he's having a lot of fun. 
Cassidy has a question, so we will try and go through over that. And Christian Joy, thank you so much for your feedback. Sanalo, we really appreciate your 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 question. And user J um, definitely has uh, a request for physics and uh, and so on. Um, so let's see what happens in the in the near future. So we'll be connecting shortly in the next five minutes uh, with Mr. Kota, and we are dealing with calculus at the moment. So give me a few minutes and we'll be back in the next uh, two minutes or so. Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving, prosperous society. However, the South African education system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Aukaf South Africa Education Wakaf to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 6,000 matriculants. At the Darul Arqam High School in Mitchell's Plain, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as Iqra, read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives. Awqaf South Africa, share the care. Mr. Kota, welcome back. Hi, hope that thank you. you. I hope that you are relieved and that you are. You know, fine old people do not weak. No, 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 no. <laughs> we have to understand that we also have to keep hydrated during the session. There's lots that goes into it in terms of energy, so we do. If they take on that. their side, it's difficult to listen to me. Imagine me just sitting and talking to a camera here, bro. Mm, tell me about it, Mr. Kota. Yeah, I was watching Riyad Musa stand-up comedy and you know what he had to do his first uh, during COVID for the first time he I, I mean he was he was dying he was alone in the studio talking to a camera laughing at his own jokes bruh. that's the only thing we can do <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be a slightly psycho you've got to have an element of uh, psychoticness, psychosis. You've got to have a psychosis to be able to do this. Because you're talking to yourself. You know, they say if you talk to yourself, there's no problem. It's when you start answering yourself. Bra, you need to go and get your head checked. You're you having say, a tea party up there, Mr. Kota. You're having a tea I, party I, I, up I, there in your mind. I just got my own. I'm just imagining I've got 5,000, 1,000 people in front of me. I'm talking. They're laughing. People are talking. It's all my imaginary. I had imaginary it's a tea friends. Party. Yeah, it's my tea party, bruh. Let's go back to maths, bruh. Right, take everybody. Show away, Mr. Kota. Let's take it away. Take it away. Right, we are all back in the groove. Bismillah. In the name of God, let's get started. Clear the frame. Clear the frame, bruh. Hey, Bali. Clear the frame. Right, let's start. Now we are going to do finding equations. Now, finding the equation or finding the equation. How's the comments coming in? They're coming in positively. Finding the equation of the function. Ah, lovely. I hope they're all positive. Right. Finding equations of uh, of the function. So let's do type number one, right? So let's say they gave you a graph that looked like this. And they tell you that that is three. They tell you that is one. And they tell you that is minus four. Right. They don't give you another point on the graph. Right. So this is type number one. So they say this is graph F. They say F of X. They say F of X is equal to X cubed plus AX squared plus PX plus Q. Find APQ. Find APQ. Okay, so in our answer. Type number one, three X intercepts are given. Very easy. So we start y equals or f of y or f of x equals you always start with this 
Start with your three X intercepts, X minus X1, X minus X2, X minus X3. This formula is not given in your formula sheet, so you've got to know it. Okay, I think, you know, we old people, we need a deep heat rub. My arm is cursed now, but let's start. Right, so X minus, minus 4, so it's X plus 4 into X minus 1 into X minus 3, right? So we change all these signs. And now all we do is we just multiply it out. X plus 4 into, this will give me X squared, minus 1, minus 3, minus 4X plus 3. Now we multiply it all out. First times all, second times all. So we left with X cubed minus 4X squared plus 3X plus 4X squared minus 16X plus 12. Now we collect all our like terms. So we got X cubed minus 4X squared plus 4X squared plus 3 minus 16 minus 13X plus 12. And there we go. So now that is F of X. So A is your coefficient of X squared. So A is equal to 0. B is your, uh, P is your coefficient of X. So P is equal to minus 13. And then your Q is equal to 12. So that value there is 12. That value there is 12. Where did we get that from? We got it from there. Agreed. So that's quite simple. X minus X1, X minus X2, X minus X3. However, however, if they give you another point on the graph, it changes the whole dynamic. So this is if only three X intercepts are given and no other point. Three X intercepts. I know my handwriting is filthy, but I think you know what I'm doing. I know some of you are saying, hey, Mr. K, you look like you took a cockroach and dipped it into ink and let it run across your page, bruh. <laughs> but you know what I'm doing. As long as I'm getting my message across. I'm trying, I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. Okay, let's clear. Uh, you've taken this one down. Let's talk to Hassanain a little bit while they're taking this one down. Hassanain, how's the comments coming? How's my friends across South Africa? Yeah, how's we are focusing. Doing? How's Paula Kwani? How's uh, hey, KZN? You know, KZN, the last time I was, I was there in KZN, I was walking along the beach. I, was, I had a cigarette in my mouth and I was looking for it. And then there was this other guy that was also walking past, past and I was lighting my cigarette and he came up to me and he says, can I have, hey, Bali, you got some current for me. And I asked, what's current? He, a current. He wanted, he wanted a light, so they called it current. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kota, that is the flow joke of the day. That is so funny, eh? We got to love you for that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so he wanted, he, they wanted some current. They wanted some current. Hmm. So I gave Definitely. him some current. Yeah, ne? Mr. Kota, I've got a fun fact for you with regards yes. to calculus, right? Yes. There was someone that lived between 19... 9.45 to 10.40, right? His name was Ibn Al-Haytham. Yes. He was an astronomer and a mathematician. Mm. He was the father of modern optics. And he authored a book, book of optics. And this is on your topic of calculus, right? So tell me some of the other bigger names. You know, this is like... Al Khawarizmi, yeah. the father of algebra. That's where it came from. Al Jabbar. Al Jabbar okay, was, we go. He was the father. Al Khawarizmi was the father, and he introduced logs. You know, there's some so many. There's so many fun facts that we can learn when we talk about logs. You know, we ask the learners, why is it log ten? Why is it base ten? Right? Isn't a equal one? Where did I do? Why? Why does it equal to zero? Let me see here. Let's ask this question here. Yeah. No, a a year a year is the coefficient of x squared. They didn't say a x cubed. They said x cubed plus a x squared. So your coefficient of x squared is a. So we got no a squared here. So it's zero. P is your coefficient of x. I'm going to show you the next one, right? So now that you've taken this one down, but I'll talk. I'll tell you guys that fun fact when we're doing the the logs. I'll explain to you guys that when we're doing the logs. Right, but in any case, let's clear the frame. 
Now watch this one to answer that last uh, learner's question, right? So now we take a graph, take this one down, take this one down. Now look at the difference between this one and the last one. Now they tell you that is minus four. They tell you that is two. Oh, what was this one? One, it was one. And that one is three. But now they give you another point on the graph. And let's say that this point that they give you on the graph is point T. And they tell you that that point T is 4 and 2. Now they tell you F of X is equal to AX cubed plus PX squared plus QX plus D. Do you see the difference between this one and the last one? The last one, I only, I only gave you three X intercepts. Now I'm giving you three X intercepts and a point. So now it's AX cubed plus PX squared plus QX plus D. Find this for seven marks. Now we start off with Y equals A into X minus X1, X minus X2, X minus X3. This is the difference. To answer the, the, that, that, what was the name? Taloshni, no? What was the name? Ms. Ms. Mudli, no? Who was it? The last person that, um, that asked the question? Tihara, Tihara, Tihara. Okay, Tihara, now you're seeing this here, right? So that's X and that's Y. Firstly, now we've got to solve for A. So now Y is 2 equals A into X is 4 minus minus 4 plus 4 into 4 minus 1 into 4 minus 3. Now we're solving for A first. So 2 equals A into 4 plus 4 is 8. 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. So now we got 2 is equal to 8 times 3 is 24a. So a is equal to 2 over 24, which is 1 over 12. Now we go back. Now watch here. Now we say f of x is equal to 1 over 12. a into x minus x1 into x minus x2 into x minus x3. So now we go a half into x plus 4 into x squared. No, 1 over 12, sorry. Thank you, Hamza. You're paying attention. Deliberate mistake. Someone is alive and awake. They are alive. They are alive and kicking. They are alive. <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on, man. Minus 3. Uh, Walla, you can't stop me from talking crap. Minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4x plus 3. And that is equal to 1 over 12. Uh, now let's multiply this one out. What did we get here? What was the last one? It was x cubed. No, man, no, man, no, man. Just give me the final answer. x cubed. Minus? Wait, wait, wait. Give me a second. Oh, calm your farm, bruh. Minus 13x plus 12. So now we multiply this thing inside. So we get 1 over 12x cubed minus 13 over 12x plus 12 over 12 is 1. So now your A value is minus 1 over 12. Your P value is your coefficient of x squared. Uh, is there any x squared in here? No. Now your P value is 0. And then your Q value is your coefficient of X, which is minus 13 over 12. And then your D value is 1. So that means this value here is 1. That is the difference. That is the difference, Ms. Moodley. That is the difference. Would they ever give a graph? Oh, sorry, uh, put up that question again for me. Would they ever give a graph with the graph touching the graph three times, but one point is unknown? Yes. Yes. I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to show you that now. So this was when the three X intercepts are given. Now, what if the turning point? So if they only give you two, that means that they must give you. Okay, look here. Look here. I want to show you something now. Come and show you something quickly. So you've taken this one down. Is everybody still online? Just put in your comments, say, we're still online, we're still okay, we're loving the session. Asanain, how's it going? 
These guys are still right. I'll give you guys another couple of seconds to take it down. Hassanain, are we all good there, my bro? Yes, we've got about 140 people on. Yeah. So most of our participants are logged on via YouTube. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. However, we do have a stream via Facebook. So let your friends know. Some of your friends would love uh, to connect via uh, Facebook. How are well, you feeling, I, Mr. Yeah. Kota? How are you feeling energized now? That you're I'm getting still brand new. From the... Okay. I am Here brand new. I am brand new. I can continue till 10 o'clock tonight. Are you from the 032, Calcetti? What kind, Lani? Where's the 032? Alauddin Sheikh. Hey, we're getting a thumbs up there. Away, away, away. Still here, Leia. Where's the 032? Where's the 032? Meritzburg. No. Sheppy. I know 031 is Taiban. Where's 032? Evram Verlem. You are from the Phoenix, XA. Eh? <laughs> you from the Phoenix. Okay, right. So here we go. I'm clearing the frame. Now, what if just I just want to show you something quickly here? Yeah? Now, don't get a panic attack here. You don't even need to take this one down. I'm just showing it to you. So what if this point here was minus 2 and that one was 3? So now they want the equation of the graph. And they tell you that the equation is uh, x cubed plus uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? Find a, b, and c. Right? Find a, b, and c. So all you're going to do now, guys, all you're going to do, you're going to say f of x is equal to x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3. Now you might be asking where the hell is x minus x3. Remember because it bounces on this point. That means you take it as a double. So that means this would be x plus 2 into x minus 3 into x minus 3 which is x minus 3 squared. So you double it. Because when it bounces on there you double it. So now this will just be x plus 2 and this would be x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now you multiply this out. This will give you x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. Now your graph would be x cubed minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4x squared plus 9 minus 12 is minus 3x plus 18. So this is your A, that is your B, and that is your C. Okay, so when it bounces on the graph, it's double. So now we gave you what your x intercepts. So now let's do the one where your turning points are given. And that's where we're going to wrap up before break. Right. So watch this. And I'm only doing one example of this. So please pay attention to the next one. So this is the last scenario that could appear. Okay. Are we all good there? They're taking it down there. Okay. Ayaka. Peace. 032 is Tongat. Hey, well done, Tongat. Nice. Awesome session. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Love you lots coming here. Lots of love here from Joburg. Zama Bayeni Bayeni Analo Unkumbi. Who else are we? Do we have there? Just put them up. Kyle Chetty Stenge. Ah, Kwadukuza. Kwadukuza. I did a workshop there in Mandeni. I, was, I used to stay in Zinkwazi and Mandeni there by the Seppi Mills. We did a workshop for 1,500 learners two years ago for the KZN Department of Education. Hey, Top Sweet, graphing out here from the Kapstadt. Hey, 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 Mikhail. Mashallah. Mashallah. Right, I'm clearing the frame. Let's do that last one before break. We are about to take our break. We're going to come back. We'll do optimization. Then we start with functions. Ooh, eh, eh. You are going to cry blood. <laughs> Sound like Jacob Zuma. <laughs> it's my man that my hey we miss him, man. We miss him. No more fun. No more guys who can't read numbers. Okay, let's go. Right now, watch this one. Watch this. Watch this. Boom shark. Watch this. Right. I tell you that is point A, and that is minus two and twelve. I tell you this is point B, and this here is 4 and minus 6. I also tell you that this point here is 1. 
Right, I tell you that the following graph is given by f of x is equal to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. For eight marks, find a, b, and c. Higher order questions, answer. Now guys, there are so many more higher order questions. We are having another higher order session next weekend, but that's a paid workshop. So if you guys want to contact us and contact Oka for contact me, where I'm only going to be focusing on all the higher order stuff. This year is intermediate, uh, basic, intermediate, and a little bit of advanced. But I can't do everything. I try, I'm try. i going to try my best, but otherwise we'll be sitting here till 12 o'clock tonight. Right, so it is done. So we will be having another session uh, next weekend. Okay, but obviously that's a paid workshop that is not free of charge. And if you want to join that workshop, you can contact us, contact OCAF, get your inquiries in. It's going to be a cracker workshop also. We're only doing the higher order stuff from all the different provinces, uh, DOE papers, IEB papers, and Sakai papers. Today we are showing you the processes, procedures, and I will be taking, I am doing some higher order stuff for you as well, but I'll be taking out also from some past papers, but we won't be able to complete everything. But we'll try our best. All right, so now... What is given? What's the difference here, Zaim? Zaim, what is the difference between this one and the last type? The last types I gave you the x-intercepts. What did I give you now? I gave you the turning points. The minute I give you turning points, what do you know about turning point, Namza? Derivative. Yes or no? So the first thing in your answer, you find the derivative. You say f dash x is equal to 3x squared. Here's it. Plus 2ax plus b. Right? The x will fall away. The c will fall away. Now you do, you call this one SP1 and you call this one SP2. I'm going to give you a model. You just follow this template. So SP1, scratch out the two Ys. We're not worried about the Y. We're only worried about our Xs. <laughs> We're worried about our Xs. Hmm. Yeah, ne? no comment. Right, let's start. So SP1. So that means you're going to have SP1 to give you your first one, and you're going to have sp2 to give you a second. So sp1, we're now going to go 3x uh, squared plus 2ax plus b is equal to 0. For minimum, remember, that's maximum. Derivative is equal to 0. This is minimum. Derivative is also equal to 0. Yes or no? So now we got the x. What's the x? Minus 2, ne? So 3 into ne. You know, we Jogan people, we say ne. Durban people say isn't. <laughs> Cape Town people, are we? minus 2 plus B. Cape Town people say yes, yes, Mr. K. Yo, somebody's screeching. I'm just waiting for the bang. Shit, he survived. No, I'm like, oh. that. So, uh, that's 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4A plus B is equal to 0. So we got minus 4a plus b is equal to minus 12. Oh, yes. Cape Townians say, Asya. Asya. So we got 4a minus b is equal to 12. And that's equation number one. Right. Now, that's your c value. Your c value is given here already. c is equal to 1. That's your last value. So we only need a and b. sp2, we're now going to put in 4 into our derivative. So 3 into 4 squared plus 2a into 4 plus b. Don't ask me why it's equal to 0. Because of derivative. <laughs> right. Derivative is always equal to 0. So 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3. 16, 32, 48. Plus 8a. Plus b is equal to 0. So now what we got? We got 8a plus b is equal to minus 48. And that's equation number two. Yo, tomorrow you guys are going to die. We are going to be doing the double and compound angles. Eesh, trigonometry, paper two. Paper two tomorrow. Paper two. Eee. It's going to be action. After action, satisfaction is equal to 12. Now I'm just going to do the simultaneous slightly different. I'm going to add the two to get rid of the B. Plus B minus B will cancel out. 8A plus 4A is 12A is equal to Minus 48 plus 12 minus 36. Yo, who's a boss? I made this thing up and how it's working out. God loves me. Ne? A is equal to, Aish, I don't have paper. Minus 36 divided by 12 is minus 3. 
right? So a is equal to minus 3. I'm just going to write it here. a is equal to minus 3. And then b, what is b? So now put any equation in terms of where am I going to do b now? Let's do it here on the top. 4a minus b is equal to 12. 4a minus b is equal to 12. We got a. a is minus 3. So 4 into minus 3 minus b is equal to 12. Minus b is equal to 12. That's minus 12. Minus 12 will come on the other side. It's plus 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. So b is equal to minus 24. So B is negative 24, A is negative 3, C is equal to 1. And there we go, you'll get 8 marks for that. First, find the derivative of the original. SP1, put in your X. SP2, put in your X. Simultaneous equations, game over. Why are they taking that down? Asya. Okaf. Hassanain. The main konain Hassanain. <laughs> How that rhymes, bro. Yes, tell me about it. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. As long as you get the same values, as long as you get uh, your A and your B, your A is equal to negative 3 and your B is equal to, B is equal to what? Minus 24. That's the name we are right, my bro. Yes, we are good. It's How's a little the bit weather chilly. Take down? It's a little bit chilly today. I'm wearing yeah. a... Something to keep me warm. It was a little bit cooler yeah, but this down, morning on my take down Whether you wake up in the morning, it's storming in the afternoon, everybody's at the beach, and at night, everybody's around the campfire because it is storming. Mm. No, no, it, it's definitely good weather in, in Cape Town, but today it's a little bit chilly and we have to take it as it comes. You know, Cape 32 Town here in Joburg to today. Good weather, yeah. Good weather, 32. Last week we had that big hailstorm. Your stuff, my cars up completely, both cars. Mm. Big I there's, a, there's a beach in, 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 in Johannesburg now, in Pretoria. Yeah, yeah, they're putting it up. Actually, there's one in Pretoria and one coming up here at Stain City also. Where, but, but that's only private. It's not open up to the public. Yo, imagine it's open up to the public. Pra, we will have problems. All right. Should it not be 24 instead of 12? I don't know. Did I make a calculation error? Uh -huh. What did I do? What did I do? But you know what I did. Did I make a calculation error here? No, I didn't. I don't think so. Minus 12 will come on that side as plus 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. So minus B is equal to 24. B is equal to minus 24. Where are you talking about? Yeah. What did I do here? Oh, no. The minus 48. That's correct. Minus 12, uh, minus 48 plus 12 is minus 36. 36 divided by 12 is 3. I think I'm right, brah. You're making me question myself. Okay. So there we go. I think we're okay. But okay, you know what I did? And there we go. Guys, that brings us to the end of our first block. Uh, I think what are we going to do? Hassanin, we take a 12.30 to 1 o'clock and people can go and make Salah one time. And then 1 o'clock we regroup and we start with optimization and functions. What do you say? That sounds like a plan. I'm oh, just let, showing oh, we the go till 1.15. <clears throat> Let's give them till 1.15. Okay. Well, we start at 1.15, guys. One time. We start... Uh, I must still do functions. I didn't do functions. So I'm actually one topic behind. Okay. Okay. But no problem. Just rest assured. Participants, just rest assured. By, by, by tomorrow close of day, we, will, we would have completed everything. I will not leave you. Don't, don't stress. Don't fear. K-Way is here. I'll see you guys. 1.15, we regroup. Inshallah. Have a lack of break. Oh. Go make your salah. Pray for me. Allah, give me hidayat. Inshallah. I mean... Okay, we thank Mr. Kota. So that has been uh, the end of segment one, where we focused on calculus. So for segment two, we will resume at quarter past one, um, and we will be uh, dealing with functions. And thereafter, we have another segment where we will be dealing with finance, and then we'll be concluding with sequences and, and series. So don't go away. Kindly let us know. Give us some feedback in the comments how you found the session. 
and also share this uh, broadcast message and the invitation to all of your fellow learners who may possibly be benefiting from the session. So the session is hosted by OCAF, South Africa in association with Kaiwe Institute, as well as iSkill. iSkill is a skills development wing of, um, of OCAF <clears throat> um, that aims to train um, post-school um, participants. All information of the session and the videos of these YouTube sessions, the, the videos will be made available. You can visit okafsa.org.za. Kindly give us some feedback. I uh, would love to get your feedback via our Instagram page. We love tweeting. We're very active on Twitter. And also, as well as Facebook, this um, stream is taking place via Facebook and YouTube. And we've got some fun content on our website that you can consume. Um, we will be we will be resuming at uh, quarter past one. So this is a comfort break for you to go outside, stretch your legs, get some get some. Um, some fresh air, some vitamin D. And then we got a question from Sonalo. My friend wants to register. Is it too late? It's definitely not too late, uh, Sonalo. Um, what your friend has to do, your friend has to log on to the OCAF Essays uh, uh, website. On the website, there is a link that your friend may join this, um, this session. I'm going to post this link in the comments below. And this is the actual events page on the OCAF website. All that she needs to do, she needs to log on using. So there we go. We're posting this comment in the chat area, Sonalo. So your friend can log on. Uh, all that you need to do is to log on to ocafsa.org.za. On the website, there is an event page. And on this event page, um, we do have a link for your friend to log on um, so she may log on uh, via YouTube. I think that's going to be the most um, comfortable and convenient session. So we are having a intermission break at the moment and we will be resuming at quarter past one uh, promptly. So make sure that you get some, some nourishment, you get to eat, um, so you may be well equipped for the session ahead we will be going through functions um, after we have done with functions we will be doing uh, a segment on finance and the concluding segment we will be focusing on sequences and series remember that this uh, session is hosted by OCAF SA in association with Kway Institute as well as iSkill so we're just having a break. Uh, it's a brief intermission. We will be resuming at quarter past one. So in the meantime, um, feel free to um, stretch your legs and get some nourishment there. All right, so Nalo has been able to get a friend to log on to the OCAF essays website. Um, and the website has all of the information that is required uh, that is required to to find out so i'm currently showing that on screen at the moment so if you log on to the ocaf essays website you'll see the address is ocafsa.org.za that's the address and once you come on to the landing page There is this banner, you can click on this banner to get some more information. And on this page, all information about the workshop is available. So you'll have easy access to the link. So you'll scroll, scroll down to the bottom. So you can click on right at the bottom. This is Matt's Paper 1 we do dealing with today. And we also have a link for Matt's Paper 2 taking place tomorrow, Sunday the 17th of October from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Let all of your friends know. So that's more information about how to access um, how to access uh, information 
uh, post event that we really want you and your friends, uh, your 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 friends, and to work a, a buddy system where you could be actually going through this session perhaps during the course of the week with your friends. So we got a question here from Umar. Umar asks, when is uh, part two workshop? So currently we are having a break, an intermission, and we will be resuming this maths paper one session at quarter past one. So if you need to stretch, um, have a comfort break, go uh, make ablutions for your Dhuar Salah perhaps, this is the chance, and we will be resuming at quarter past one for the session. So Kayla also needs some more information. How do we get into next week paid session? Uh, I think there we're going to try and um, get some information to you from the Kayway Institute. And more information, you can reach us on okafsa.org.za. So we will be resuming at quarter past one. We're currently having a comfort break.
Let's see, let's see, let's get fired up. Has anyone watched the movie? I had a sandwich, I bought me a sandwich in the morning from Vida, yeah. Yo, who bought? Quality education is a cornerstone of a thriving, prosperous society. However, the South African education system is under strain, necessitating the work of the Aukaf South Africa Education Wakaf to help ease the pressure. Our metric mathematics upgrade project alone has already impacted the lives of over 6,000 matriculants. At the Darul Arqam High School in Mitchell's Plain, the pass rate increased from 70% to a remarkable 100%. For one student in particular, it was a life-changing experience. With the very first word of the Holy Quran being revealed as Iqra, read, educating our community is an act of faith. With your help, we can transform many more lives. Awqaf South Africa, share the care. I can't hear her. I'm not hearing Thank you. Thank you there, Mr. Kota. Salaam alaikum go. and good afternoon Bye. and welcome to all our learners, participants. Mr. Kota and his team at Johannesburg HQ beaming there. I'm coming from the Okav Cape Town studios here, Okav SATV. We're coming to you live, streaming to you via YouTube and Facebook, www dot okafsa.org.za that is the website to get all of your information about the sessions so we are doing maths mathematics paper one and we're doing pure maths session from 10 a.m we started we're gonna and we're gonna go until about 3 uh, 3 30 um, um this afternoon tomorrow we will be resuming promptly at um at quarter to 10, perhaps, between quarter to 10 and, and 10 o'clock, I was speaking to Mr. Kota for mathematics, paper two, and that is perhaps from quarter to 10 till about three or, or perhaps 3.30. Uh, so please join us for that. And then we hand over to Mr. Kota because I think we have to move on with the program. So welcome to all of you. Let us know in the comments below. Hit us up with a one if you're joining the live stream or hit us up with a two if you're watching this as a post event. And also in the comments below, let us know how was your break? Are you feeling refreshed? Are you feeling energized? Are you feeling motivated? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling happy? Let us know in the comments. Your feedback, your interaction is what's going to drive this program uh, forward. Mr. Kota, we hand it over to you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to everybody. I hope you guys had a lack of break. You prayed for your sins and we are now back in session. As you can see, got my refresher here. Ice cold Red Bull. I waited 30 minutes for it. They're laughing here in the studio. But in any case, okay guys, we are now, we, we finished the whole of calculus. We are now into optimization and then we'll start with functions. Let's get cracking with round two. Sogbona second half. Right. 
Optimization, guys. Optimization is volume and total surface area. Right. Now, you know, for all your standard shapes, right, you got different uh, total surface area formulas. I'm going to give you one formula that you can use for all shapes, for all your standard shapes. Now, standard shapes would refer to what? Standard shapes would be referred to your cubes, your prisms, your cylinders, and your triangular prism. Right. So now, assuming that it's closed on top and at the bottom, right? Uh, assuming that your shape is closed on top and at the bottom. Right. So say you had a box. Say you had a box. And it's closed at the bottom and closed on top and total surface area because there are two bases, one, two bases, two times area of base. So take this formula down, two times area of base plus perimeter of the base, PER, perimeter of base times your height. Right. So basically, if we uh, shorten this, this will become 2AB plus PBH. Two times area of base plus perimeter of your base times height. So whatever your base is, if your base is a cube, length times breadth. And then your perimeter would be four times side. If it's a rectangular prism, uh, area of base would be length times breadth. Perimeter of base would be two times side plus two times side. You just adjust this formula for all these various shapes. If it's a cylinder, area of base would be pi r squared. The perimeter of base, what's the perimeter of a cylinder? The perimeter of a cylinder is two is equal to two pi r. That's the circumference of a cylinder. All right? If it's a triangular prism, area of base would be half base times perpendicular height. This you know from grade 10. Perimeter of the base would be side plus side plus side. Okay. So just remember. So what if the top was open and the bottom was closed? So say there was only one base. Then you'd say total surface area is equal to one times area of base because you only got one base plus perimeter of base times height. And if you had no base, and if it was open on both sides, say it was open on both sides, you'll say total surface area is equal just to just perimeter of base times height. Because you've got no, no base, right? If it's open on the top, so say it was a cylinder like that, and it's open on the top and open at the bottom, there's no basis. So you don't put in the base. You just say perimeter of base times your height. And that's your total surface area. So we'll use this one formula and adapt it to all your standard shapes. Just remember, total surface area, 2AB plus PBH. All right. Now the fun starts. Now that you've understood it, let's get started now with some. So we're going to do some shapes, some graphs. I won't be able to do uh, plenty. I'll do a couple of examples. We'll do about four or five just so that you understand the concept. Okay. So let's get started here, guys. You've taken this down, total surface area, 2AB plus PBH, two times area of base plus perimeter of base times height, and that's for a closed top and bottom. All right, we're good to go. One formula for all shapes. Unless it's a sphere or a dome or a cone, they'll give it to you. All right, let's start here. Let's start with a drinking glass. Or let's start with a cylinder like this. So they give you a cylinder, take this diagram down. They tell you that the radius is X. They tell you that the height is 300 minus X. Right, question number one, uh, find the volume, find the volume of the cylinder in terms of X, in terms of, ITO is in terms of X. Or they could even say, show that volume is equal to what's it 9,42 x or 9 942.942 x squared minus 3,14 x cubed. They can even say you must show that the volume is equal to that or find number two, find x giving maximum value, find x giving maximum volume. And then find the maximum volume. Now, this here would be probably about three marks. That would be three marks. 
and that would be three marks. Total marks plus minus nine marks in your exam. Okay, so while you guys are taking this down, those of you who want to start with this, now this year is a completed cylinder year. We're not worried whether the base is open or closed. It's a cylinder and they want volume. They're not asking you for total surface area. Right. So generally, these are the questions. This is how your questions will be uh, asked under uh, application. So you'll find the volume. They'll ask you to find area or total surface area. It's plug and play. Here it's pure substitution. So question number one, it's substitution into your normal formula. Find x giving minimum or maximum. That's where we're going to use derivative. And find the maximum volume. We plug that back into your original. So let's, let's answer. So those are your questions. Here are your answers. Let's start with the first one. What do we know about the volume of a cylinder? Volume is equal to pi r squared times height. Now, they don't have pi in there. So we're going to take, I'm just going to use pi as 3,14, right? 22 over 7. R is x squared, and your height is 300 minus x. All we do is just we multiply this out. So 3,14x squared into 300 minus x. And what do we get? 3,14 times 300 is 942x squared minus, we multiply it out, I'm distributing. 3,14x cubed. And there we go, guys. Volume is equal to, we've showed the first one. Volume is equal to 942x squared minus 3,14x cubed. Units cubed. Right? Units cubed. You must put in your units. So if they give it to you in centimeters or meters or whatever, you must put your cube units. So it's volume. Okay. Find x giving maximum volume. That's where we're going to answer question number two. So we're now going to answer question number two here. So this is where we're going to have the, we, we're going to be using the derivative. We're going to say, therefore, dv over dx is equal to 2 times 942 is 1884x minus 3 times 3,14 is 9,42x squared. And for, de, for minimum or maximum, derivative is equal to zero. For minimum or for maximum, your derivative must always equal to zero okay now we take out our highest common factor 9,42 x into that divide by that i get 300 minus x equals zero so x is equal to zero minus x will equal to minus 300 so x will equal to 300 therefore 300 is x giving maximum 300 is x giving maximum volume Now, find the maximum volume. So, we take the 300 and we plug it back into the original. Don't plug it back into your derivative. You're going to get zero. So, you plug it back into your original. So, what would your volume equal to? So, the answer to question number three, if you plug the 300 back into here, so volume is equal to 942 into 300 squared minus 3,14 into 300 cubed. You're going to get 1, 2, 5, 6, 0, 0, 0 units cubed. You sub into original. You sub the 300 back into your original. And there we go. We've answered the three questions. We've got ourselves nine marks on that. Okay. We all good here, guys. Everything good. Onliners, are we sharp? Are we okay? Yes, uh, we, we won't do probability today. We'll do probability tomorrow. We'll do as much as we can today. The balance of whatever we don't finish today will be carried over into tomorrow. You can't get zero. What if you put 300? 942 into 300 squared. Minus 3,14 into 300 cubed. Or is it 200? Just work it out. Yeah. 9,42 minus 3. So 2 times 9,42 is 1,884. 8, 8, 3 times 3,14 is 9,42. 9,42. Hey, this is 200. Hey, this is 200. This is 200. So x is 200. Just put in 200. 942 into 200 squared minus 3,14 into 200 cubed. Now 
ne? Yeah, it works. There we go. There we go, guys. There we go. We're going to be covering every topic, guys. We're going to be finishing, but tomorrow we're going to finish a little late. We're going to try and push as much as we can. As long as you guys are alive, I'm alive. All right? Volume is cubed. Nasiha, volume is cubed, not square. We're not finding the area. We are finding the volume. Volume is cubed. All right? Let's do the next one. Now, what's the next one? So you do this for all your shapes. What happens if they give you a graph? What happens if they give you a graph and they give you something that looks like this? Take this one down. Sometimes in the exam, they like giving you stuff like this. So they give you that. They tell you that's a rectangle underneath a parabola. They tell you that's graph F. They tell you F of X is equal to minus 3X squared plus 18. Right? They tell you this is point A. B, that's zero, that's C, that's D. They highlight that, they tell you that is equal to that, and they call that distance X. Right. One question for 10 marks. Find the maximum area of the shaded part of the shaded rectangle. Beneath f of x. One question for 10 marks. So what do we need to do? We first need to find it, asking you to find the maximum area. So question. So in your answer, we know we've got to break it up into three parts. What are our three parts? We need to find the maximum area in terms of x. Then we're going to use derivative and find x. After we find x, we're going to substitute it back into the original to get the maximum area. Yes or no? Umaid, we okay. Zaim, we okay. All right. Go for it. Crack it. Now, like I said, guys, while you guys are doing this, I'll just check to you a little bit. Right? Obviously, we cannot do every humanly possible type of question in the little time that we have. I'm showing you the processes and procedures. We're choosing some examples um, taken out from past papers. But like I said, those of you who'd like to join us, you can join us for the paid workshop next week. And as well, you can contact Okaf or you can contact us directly, right? You can even WhatsApp me. You can WhatsApp me. Here's my cell phone number. You can WhatsApp me. Please don't stalk me, right? You can WhatsApp me on 081-706-3986, right? That is my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp, or you can WhatsApp me for next weekend's workshop. Now, next weekend, we'll start at 9 and finish off at 4. 9 to 4 on Saturday, 9 to 4 on Sunday. We're doing all the, we're doing much more also. We're taking other questions from other past papers as well. So if you guys want to, here's my cell phone number. You guys can take it down. Contact me, contact Okaf as well, right? And keep in touch with me. Let me know how your session went. You can even WhatsApp me, tell, tell me, listen here, loving the show. We want you to do this for us next week. This is what we want you to do. This is where we're at, who you are. Let us know how you're feeling about the show, right? We want to know. So, we Mr. Want you K, do I get commission for every learner that enrolls to your class? Why not? I'm also Bismillah. good at maths, eh? I'm also good at mathematics. Bismillah, of course, of course, 100%. And I hope you guys are up early tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to start at 10 a.m. sharp. So, please make sure you have a good night rest tonight, right? I know your brains are going to be fried with the amount of mathematics you've done today. But don't stress, if I can do 72 hours of non-stop math and still survive, you guys can be there. You guys can do it. Okay, let's look at this. Some of you are stuck. We need area is length times breadth. So if this is x, we know that is x. Yes or no? That means the length here is 2x. Now, many of you don't know what is the breadth. Am I right? Is that where you stuck? Good. Now, look here. If this here from there to there is x, that means this point here from here to here, its x value is x, and its y value is f of x. And what is f of x? That's given to you already. Minus 3x squared plus 18. That is your y value. From there to there is your y value. Minus 3x squared plus 18. So, your area is equal to length times breadth, which is equal to x, a uh, 2x, sorry, 2x into your breadth, which is minus 3x squared plus 18. 
Your function value at that point is your y value. That is your y value. So that will give me minus 6x cubed plus 18 times 2 is 36x. Right? Cube. Sorry, I put squared. Minus 6x cubed, minus 6x cubed, plus 36x. Now we know, now we're going to say, therefore, dA over dx, we need to solve for x. That will give me minus 18x squared, plus 36. For minimum or maximum, must equal to 0. So divide by minus 18, you're going to get x squared minus 36. Divide by 18 is 2, is equal to 0. So x squared is equal to 2 x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So I think if we put plus square root of 2, we're going to get whichever one gives you the highest, pos uh, the highest positive area. So area is equal to minus 3 into root 2 squared plus 18. Just check. Does it give me a positive value? Let's do it together. Minus 3, open brackets, root 2, close brackets, squared, plus 18. What do I get? I get 12. And if you put minus 2, uh, you're still going to get the same value. So area is equal to 12 units square or square units. And there we go. 10 marks for that, guys. Right? That's your area. So we did one in terms of a shape. We did one in terms of, in fact, let's do one total surface area one. Let's do a total surface area one. After this, we got, a, we got a question from Nasiha. Okay, let's see. Nasiha, wait, how did you find the y value? The y value, remember, if this is x, the y value is the function value at that point. So, what's the y value? No matter what x is, what is y? Y is f of x. So, the equation of your graph is your y value. The equation of your graph at that point is the y value. Because no matter what your x is here, your y is going to be that function value. So that's length times breadth. This y value here is the equation of your graph. Does it answer your question, Nasiha? The area, is it calculated for half of the box or the whole box? For the entire box. For this entire box. Mpumza. For this entire box, x plus x is 2x, length times breadth. And the breadth here is minus 3x squared plus 18. Okay. So there we go. Minus 3 into root 2 squared. Minus 3 into root 2 Squared plus 18. I'm just double checking our answer. Yes, 12 units squared. Okay, perfect, guys. There we go. That's one. Let's do one in terms of total surface area, right? That's where I'll wrap up with optimization. That's where I will. Do you know? Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, let's do this again, right? So let's take that same drinking. Let's take that same vessel that we had. And I tell you that the radius is x, and I tell, uh, tell you this is 300 minus x, number one, and it's closed on the top and at the bottom. It's a solid cylinder. So find the total surface area, find the total surface area of the cylinder. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to say total surface area is equal to 2 times area of base plus perimeter of base times height. So, 2, area of base is pi r squared, plus your perimeter of your base is 2 pi r times your height. So, this is 2 into 3,14. r is x squared, plus 2 times 3,14 times x times, times 300 minus x. So 2 times 3,14 is 6,28x squared plus 2 times 3,14 is 6,28x into 300 minus x. That is equal to 6,28x squared plus 
300 times 6,28, 300 times 6,28, 1884 plus 1884x minus 6,28x squared, minus 6,28x squared. In this case, that and that will cancel out. And we are left with 1884x. So now your dA over dx is equal to, if we find the derivative here, we get 1884. And that's your final answer. That, you, that would be your total surface area. Question? Yes. Victor has a question. Okay, isn't the length of re the rectangle 2x? Yeah, so we, we said the length was 2x. 2x multiplied by, in the previous one, the previous that was in the previous question, the length was 2x, and then the, the height was what? Minus 3x squared plus 18. And that gave me my min minus 6x cubed. Did I say x or did I say 2x in the last one? We said it as 2x. Oh, okay. So we're good. Question? Yes. Okay. Y was the length equal to 2x. Okay. So I'm just going to clear this frame. Remember in the previous one, we had that. We had that. We had that. We had this, we had that, we had that. That piece was equal to that. That was x. From there to there was x. Remember, we needed the whole length of the whole shape. So if from year to year is x, so then from there to there is also x, right? It's also x. So x plus x is 2x. That's the entire length. 1x plus 1x is 2x. That was your length. And what is your breadth? Your breadth is minus 3x squared plus 18. That's your breadth. Does that answer your question, brother? Okay, you want the mark, alloca uh, mark allocation for this one here was 9 marks. Right? 9 marks in total for, for calculating the total surface area of this one. Okay, let's go on. Let's go into functions, guys. Let's go into functions. I don't have much time. Let's go. Let's do functions. Now, under functions, you guys need to know your straight line. You got to know your parabola, both of them. The one that is y equals a into x minus p all squared plus q. You've got to know your hyperbola and its shift. The hyperbola y equals a over x or you got to know y equals a over x minus p plus q oopsie and you got you got to know your exponential y equals a to the power x or y with a shift a a to the power x minus p plus q and number five you got to know the log graph for all the graphs you need to know how to sketch you need to know how to find equations. You need to know how to give the domain, the range, how to shift the graph, how to give reflections of the graph, and how to give the inverse functions of the graph. So we're going to talk a little bit about the inverse function first. Before we start with any of the graphs, Please, you need to know all your formulas. I'll show you when we start doing the application, how we're going to crack function. Now, function is a nice topic. You can score full marks in functions. So if you score full marks in algebra, that's 20 marks. 40 marks, you score full marks in calculus. That's how much? 40 and 20 is 60. And then you can score another 40 marks here in your functions. That's 100. So you've already got 100 out of 150. You've got 67%. We haven't even touched sequences and series, and we haven't touched probability and finance yet. So I want to do functions and finance today. You're going to love it. Even the finance, I'm just going to give you all the whole overview, all the different types of questions that they can give you and how to do each of them. Okay. So question. let's get started. G, question. 
So they'll give you, right, so they'll give you three marks, Nasiha, they'll give you three marks for, for putting it into the formula, three marks for finding the derivative, and then three marks for substituting it back into the original in order to get your final answer. So they'll give you three marks, three marks, three marks. Okay. Okay, Ayaka, your favorite topic, functions. All right, let's get cracking. I'm clearing the frame. Let's start here. Now, in fact, I'm going to start off. Let's start off with a model, right? So let's do this. Take this one down with me. Okay, so they give you a graph like that. And they give you a graph like that. And they tell you that that's zero. This is graph F. That's graph G. They tell you F of X is equal to X squared minus 2X minus 8. And they tell you that G of X is equal to MX plus Q. Right. Let's put the questions here on the side. Right. Question number one. They call this point A. They call that point B. They call that point D. And they call this point E. They also then give you a distance between these two. And they tell you that that point is point J, that's point K, and this is point L, that is 90 degrees. Right. They also then give you this distance here, and they call that T. That's your Y axis. This is your X axis. Okay, now the first question, they tell you find the length of AB, find the length of AB. Question number two, find OD. Question number three, find M and Q. Question number four. Find the maximum length of JK. Number five, they want the range of F. Question number six, for which values of X is F of X greater than G of X? For which values of x is f of x less than or equal to g of x? For which values of x is f of x times g of x less than zero, less than or equal to zero? So there we go, six questions on this. Six questions on this. We'll talk about the inverse functions just now after this. Question. Question, let's see. Okay. All right. If I have enough time, if I have enough time, I'll do one with speed, displacement, and acceleration, right? I'll definitely do one like that with you. No problem. Just keep that. Make a note of that. Uh, Hassanain, just make a note of that one, right? So that I don't forget. Yeah, we'll do that one. Don't worry. Don't stress. So we'll always have it here with us. So it won't go anywhere. It won't fly away like your Red Bull is giving you wings now. So don't fly yeah. away, Mr. Kota. Stay with us here. We need you. I'm here, bro. I'm here. I'm here. I'm grounded. Okay, that's good. My mantra for today is I'm the light to dispel darkness. <laughs> wow. What profound words. I think I should quote you on that. Eh? It's quite a statement. Uh, let's go. Right, find the length of AB. So all you we do is we ask ourselves, what is? What is A? What is B? So there's two questions you must always ask yourself in your mind. What is and how? So what is A? What is B? A and B are the two x-intercepts. How do we find it? If it's not in the graph, it must be in the equation. If it's not in the equation, it must be in the graph. It can't be somewhere in the A. So let's answer question number one. So how do we find the x-intercepts? To find the x-intercepts, we say let y equal to zero. Right? So we get x squared minus 2x minus 8 equal to zero. We all know that. We're going to factorize that. x minus 4, x plus 2 equal to zero. 
x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 2. So obviously this value here b. So a, um, a's coordinates is negative 2 and 0. B's coordinates is 4 and 0. The length of AB, length can't be negative. So it's 2 plus 4. So therefore, AB is equal to 6 units. There we go. All right. There we go. Take that one down. Let's answer the second one, O, D. What is O? O is the center. What is D? The y-intercept. So, okay, I'm going to put minus 2 here, and I'm going to put 4 there, right? Because we're going to be using it in our problem. Right, what is D? D is the y-intercept of both graphs. So, if it's not given here, it's given there. So, y is equal to minus 8. That is negative 8. So, the answer to question number 2 is O, D is equal to 8 units. Right, Hamza? Good. Find M and Q. Umaid, what is M? What is Q? M and Q. There's M. There's Q. So we know Q is negative 8. Q is negative 8. What is M? The gradient. How do we find the gradient? Now come and show you guys a shortcut. How to find the gradient. I'm just going to delete this. I need some space here. We love shortcuts. Show us all. That's okay. it. I'm going to show them now. I'm going to show them now. So to find M, all you do, watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here. We're doing number three. So let me put my pen on. We're answering question number three. So M is equal to, all you do, change the sign of Y over keep the sign of X. Boom. That's your final answer. Eight over four, which is two. You don't need to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When your two intercepts are given, change the sign of y, change the sign of y, divided by keep the sign of x. Your answer is 2. So your final answer here is going to be 2x minus 8. Right, that's 2. 2x minus 8. So your q value here is negative 8. Full marks, full marks. They... Your memo only gives you the final answer. They don't care how you got it. Go and check it. All your memos. Your final memos only got give you your final answer. Why waste time? The maximum length of JK. Now that's an interesting one. They don't give you the X value there. They want How's it JK. Going with that eraser there, Mr. K? G. How's it going That's with your eraser there? Sorry? How's it going with your rubber eraser on the whiteboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. It's, it's, it's working. It's working, but it's quite tiny. So it takes me a bit of time to erase everything. Okay. Nachala, I think I'm going to just show you how to increase the stroke. So it will make it easier for you. Okay. Yeah, well, this is Google Meets the stuff. All right. Anyway, back to math. Back to math, question number four. The maximum length of JK, so JK. So JK is top graph minus bottom graph. JK is equal to top graph minus bottom graph. So what's your top graph? F of X minus your bottom graph is G of X. So JK, what's F of X? F of X is equal to X squared minus 2X minus 8, right Yasin? Minus G of X. Yasin only say G. I call him G by. Because everything. <laughs> Yasin G. G. Everything G. G by. What about I H? I what about H? By. Yeah. <laughs> Yasin, he knows from the beginning of the year, I call him G by. So X squared. He goes, he comes from Pakistan, I think. He goes up his state, town he says, he sells DVDs. Right. Minus 2X plus 8. So this is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 2x minus 4x plus 8 minus 8 cancels out. So that's jk. Now you're sitting with a bit of a challenge because now you've got jk in terms of x. How are you going to find it? You don't have the x value there. But what do they use the word? What word do they use? And when do we use minimum or maximum? Ah, like a boss. Derivative. So we say djk over dx is equal to 2x minus 4 
equals to zero two x is equal to four ne? Yeah. x is equal to two now put two back into there now take your two and put it back into there so two squared is four minus four into two so four minus eight is minus four and you know distance can't be negative so it's four units there we go question yeah boy yes let's see question what's q q is minus eight q is the y-intercept of your straight line q that was q that was q there q is minus eight which is the y-intercept of your straight line q that's q that's q q is the y-intercept of your straight line and it's also the y-intercept of your parabola it's the same point we have another one from nicholas okay let's check how do you do number three let's go back how do you do number three right you change to find the m value this uh, this is for nicholas how do we find m okay q we got q is minus eight right nicholas all you do change the sign of y change the sign of y minus eight becomes plus eight and then keep the sign of x plus four eight over four is two so change the sign of y over keep the sign of x change the sign of y over keep the sign of x agreed so you can write that down to find m change the sign of y divided by keep the sign of x so there we go change the sign of y because we're going up so that's plus eight over plus four that will give me two that's how we find the gradient okay nicholas i hope that answers your question my brother from another mother yes and if it was two points given then you can use y2 minus y1 but if your two intercepts are given then you change the sign of y over keep the sign of x i'm going to show you more shortcuts as we go along right let's look at the next question uh the range of f now the range of f that's that value there so basically you want the y value you want the range refers to your y value so what's your lowest y value you need to find your turning point now many of you the answer to question number five you would probably use minus b over 2a to get the x value and then you'll plug it in to get the y i'm saying i'm going to give you a formula for for the range to get the y value of your turning point you can just use 4ac minus b squared over 4a that is to get the range so 4a is 1 c is minus 8 minus b squared minus 2 squared over 4 into 1 minus 32 minus 4 is minus 36 over 4 is minus 9 so your lowest y value here is negative 9 so the range of your graph is all y greater than so the range is y greater than or equal to minus 9 y is an element of real numbers or you can say from minus 9 to positive infinity but minus 9 is included so we put a square bracket so this is the formula for calculating the range 4ac minus b squared over 4a so i don't need to first find the x then substitute then if there's a formula for x don't you think there's a formula for y and that's the formula for y to find the y value of your turning point of the range 4ac minus b squared over 4a you can even use that for finding the minimum or maximum value of the graph okay are we all okay there how's our onlineers doing there um what's the name are yes, they all good are, are they still fine. alive so this is a session with intense concentration okay, Ayaka. and focus pleasure ayaka yes that method to find m always works right let's now do f of x greater than g of x wait let me erase all of this first yes 
You guys are going to get lots of shortcuts, lots of new things that I'm going to teach you between today and tomorrow. So why are you clearing your board there, Mr. Kota? Gee. I would encourage some of the participants, when you have a chance, send us a photo how you are linking up to the session. Are you using your smartphone? Send us a photo behind your laptop. Are you with a few friends? Are you at school? Are you in the classroom? Are you in your lounge? Send us a few pictures of you during the session. I want to see perhaps yourself behind the laptop and perhaps with your notes. That's dangerous, bro. Censored, eh? Censored. Censored Easy. pictures. Yes, no, definitely. And you don't know these great wells. Hey, as a name, what can come out of that? That's an open-ended. You're walking. It's a trap, my brother. It's a trap. Okay. It's a PG-13 <laughs> show. We would like to remind you. Uh, we'll keep the language family-friendly. and um, Family-friendly yeah. pictures. Everything is family-friendly. Okay. F of X greater than G of X. Greater means above. So where is gra graph F above? Remember, greater means above. Where is F above G? For all your X values greater than 4. So I'm answering question number 6.1. Let's call that 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. .6 so 6.1 greater than for all your X values greater than 4. Or where is it above? All your X values less than 0. For all your X values less than 0. 6.2. Less than or equal to. So they are equal at these two points. So that means for X, less than or equal to 4, but greater than or equal to 0. Come I, come I, come I throw something even? Okay. No, we won't do it in this question. I'll do it in the next one. There's something exciting coming up. Right. 6.3. Where is f of x times g of x less than 0? So now to answer this question, less than 0 is a negative result. So multiply. A positive times a negative will give me a negative. So that's solution number one. And solution number two, a negative times a positive is a negative, right? Because you want a negative less than 0. So let's do solution number one. I'm going to do solution number one. You're going to do solution number two on your own. There's two answers to it. Solution number one is where is F? So it's F of X times G of X. So let's just put it here. Let me just change the color here. So let's say that is F and let's say that is G. Right. Where is F positive? Where is F positive? So F is positive. F is above your X axis for all your X values greater than 4. Or it's positive for all your X values less than 0. That's where F is positive. Where is G negative? Where is G below for all your values less than 4? All right? You can see it's underneath your X axis for all your values less than 4. So now you put a line for all your X values less than 4. Now the multiplication. Multiplication means where do those two systems overlap? Where does this system and the bottom system overlap? Do they overlap here? No. They overlap. Where do they overlap? Do they overlap here? No. There's nothing there. There's only here at the bottom. So they don't overlap here. They don't overlap here. Where do they overlap? Only there for all your X values. So your first answer is X less than zero. Now your memos don't show you how it's done. I'm showing you how it's done. Your memos will only give you your final answer. You'll be totally lost. You won't know how you got your answer. So I did system number one. You do system number two. Come. You do solution two. I did solution one for you. You do solution number two. Let's check.
Now you'll do this even for trig functions. If f of x was a sine graph, g of x was a cos graph, you'll do the same thing. Check where they overlap, where the two systems overlap. So let's do solution number two. Can I erase this? Guys, you took solution one down. Right. I'm deleting. I'm erasing solution number one. I'm now doing the first. So your first answer was x less than zero. Four marks. And your final paper, go and check any memo. No memo shows you how it's done. Every memo will only give you the final answer. And you'll be sitting there crapping cop like, what the hell did they do? Right. Now, we're doing solution number two. Where is F negative? F is below between minus two and four. So between minus two and is an equal to sign. So between negative two, so I put a full circle between minus two and four. That's where F is negative. Now, where is G positive? Where's G positive? For all your values greater than, the only places where G is positive, greater than or equal to four, yes or no? This is where G is positive. Where do these two systems overlap? They only overlap there. So your other answer is x equal to 4. So your first answer was x less than 0. Your second answer, x equal 4. Are you guys with me? Right. Let's go into the inverse function. We're starting with the inverse. Now, it's very important you guys understand this. No, what? Where's minus two? No, they only overlap here. They don't overlap anywhere here. They don't overlap anywhere here. These two systems need to overlap. So x is equal to four. This is the point where they overlap at x equal four. Okay. So let's go back. Let's now start. Put the heading, the inverse function. Then we're going to do the hyperbola. But I'm going to show you the inverse functions of all the graph, especially the one with the parabola. Because you know you're going to be asked, and the log graph. Question? Yes. Okay. We're getting to that. Cassidy? <laughs> Cassidy, we're getting to that, boss. We're getting to that. Right. Let's start here with the inverse functions. Right. The inverse means the opposite. And we all know we need to swap the x and the y. And we need to make y the subject of the formula. So if they told you, and the inverse is to the power minus 1, like that, f of minus 1 or g of minus 1. So whenever they talk about f of minus 1 or g of minus 1, what are they talking about, mate? They're talking about the inverse function. Right. So if f of x, let's start off with a straight line graph, 2x plus 4. So y is equal to 2x plus 4. And they want the inverse function of that. So here we go. Swap the x and the y. So x is equal to 2y plus 4. So we swap the x and the y. And now we make y the subject of the formula. So 2y is x minus 4. y is equal to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, a half x minus 2. So f of minus 1x is equal to a half x minus 2. Both of them are functions. That's a function. That's a function. We all know what's a function. A function is a one-to-one -one relation. And a relation, or not a function, is a one-to-many relation. One x, many y. We're coming to that. Are you with me? Hamza. Hamza, one x value, one y value. It's a function, boss. I wish I had those big punching hands here. Punch you like this. <laughs> Round two, fight. <laughs> KO, finish him. Finish him. <laughs> What's it, the mashup, Mr. K, of uh, Mortal Kombat and uh, Street Fighter? That's correct. Finish him. That's how we need to finish meds. That's how we dollar meds. Finish him. 
Perfect. Fatality. Fatality. That's it. That's it. Right. So now we do the, let's say H of X is equal to 4 over X minus 1 plus 2. That's a hyperbola with a shift in asymptotes. And they want H of minus 1. Right. Blom. Take a chill pill. Calm your farms. <laughs> Let me show you now. I show you a shortcut. It's only worth one mark in the exam. I show you a shortcut how you do it. You don't need to swap X and Y and make Y the subject. All you do is you say 4 over X minus plus. You keep the two signs. You just swap the P and the Q value. Make that 2, make that 1. Game over. That's the inverse function. Just swap those two. But keep the sign. Don't change the signs. So that's the inverse of the hyperbola with the shift in asymptotes. Right. I show you a shortcut for the parabola. Come and show you a shortcut for the parabola. Make you vase. <laughs> I vase you, Sani. I vase you. Let's vase them. So f of x is equal to, let's say, 2x squared, right? So you know that that parabola goes like that. Now they want the inverse function. So come and show you what you do. Come and vase you. What's the opposite of a square? Is a square root, ne? But you put plus minus, isn't it? Asya. What's the inverse of 2 over 1? 1 over 2. And we took away the square, so we only left with x. And that's your answer. So even if g of x was equal to minus a third x squared, so g of minus 1x will equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 1 over 3, 3 over 1x. Now, draw the inverse on, so this is f. So how, this is pointing to the positive y. So obviously the inverse now will point to the, if the original points to the positive y, can you see me there? Can you see there? I'm not making, uh, I'm not being rude. I'm just saying this is the parabola. If it's pointing to the positive y, then the inverse will be pointing to the positive x. And that's f of minus 1. Now, in your prelims, they even asked you, explain why f of minus 1 is not a function. f of minus 1, in this case, is not a function. Why? Because for one x value, you got many y values. Because, do you guys know that this symbol means because? The opposite, the upside down of therefore means because. Oh, well, I'm teaching you now. Right. Some English lessons. The opposite. <laughs> right. That means because. Right. Because it's a one to many relation. Now they'll ask you, how will you restrict the domain? How will you restrict the domain? of f so that f of minus 1 becomes a function. Very easy. Let me explain to you what it means. So, if I, say, if I restrict the domain of f, so f of x is equal to 2x squared, and if I say x greater than or equal to 0, now watch here. That means f of x, 2x squared for x greater than or equal to 0 is only half of the graph. Now I'm restricting the domain. That means my inverse would look like that. That's f of minus 1. And that's a function. So your first answer is for x greater than or equal to 0, or... For x less than or equal to 0, that would be the negative part of the positive parabola. And that would be the negative part 
of the positive inverse or for x less than or equal to zero that's your answer for x greater than or equal to zero or for x less than that's how you restrict the domains in order for your inverse to become a function yes or no now we're going to do the exponential now we're going to do the exponential right so if i told you h of x is equal to 2 to the power x so obviously h of minus 1x will equal to the opposite of an exponential is a log so it's going to be log 2x now how does your positive exponential look your positive exponential will look like that going through the point 0 and 1 always why any base to the power zero whenever x is zero the y value will always be one from your rules of exponents so how will your log graph look your log graph a positive log graph would look like that and that's your log graph h of minus one and that one this one goes to zero and one this is the opposite of it so this would be one and zero so even if they gave you a point here two and three then that means, and say this is point A, then this year would be point A dash, and that would be 3 and 2. You just swap everything around. So this is a positive exponential. A negative exponential, h of x is equal to a half to the power x. When this is a fraction, and that's positive, that's a negative exponential, and that goes in that direction also through the point 0 and 1. And then your log graph h of minus 1 x will equal to log of a half x or minus log x, log of 2x. That's the same thing, right? But in fact, just leave it as log of a half x. And your negative log graph would then go in this direction going through the point 1 and 0. So it will always go through 1 and 0. They'll ask you in the exam, they'll call that point P and they'll say, give the coordinates of P. You just put 1 and 0. They won't ask you why. They know you know why. Okay. Now, what other questions will they ask you on this? They're going to ask you. All right. So let's put it down. Let's give you a scenario now. Let's go into exam conditions. Onliners, are we all right? Question. Can we do the previous question where f of x was greater than g of x? Okay. Greater just means above. Greater just means above. So watch what we're going to do now. I'm clearing the frame, right? So just to answer that question where that learner asked the question. So we had something like that and we had that. So where is f of x greater than g of x? That point was 4. This point here was 0. Where is f above g? Where is f of x greater than g of x? I'm just answering that question, that learner's question. So f is above g for all these values and for all these values. So for all your x values greater than to the right of 4 or for all your x values to the left of 0. Okay, so let's let's throw you guys into the deep end. I hope that answers that one question where that learner asked, what, can I please explain where is f of x? A, greater means above. Less than means below. Equal to means where they intersect. Okay, let's delete this. Right, now pay attention here. I now tell you to sketch g of x is equal to 3 to the power x. Right. I then ask you for the domain of g. I ask you for the range of g. I ask you for the equation of the asymptote. 
of T. I ask you to, if P of X is equal to G of X reflected about the Y axis, I want the equation of P of X. I want the inverse function. I want the inverse of G of X. And I want the domain of G of minus 1. And I want the equation of the asymptote. of g of minus 1. Okay, so let's do it. Take out, take down all these questions. While you're taking it down, we'll just now answer. You guys continue taking it down. How's all the comments coming in? How's everything going there? Onliners, are we all sharp? Are we all okay there? We are fine, Mr. Kota. Oh, yes. And to ask the, to answer that last question of that one learner, Let's see where, for which values of x for which values of x is g dash x greater than zero. Ha! There we go. So there we go. You asked me for f prime x greater than g prime x. So here's it. g prime x. Where is g prime x greater than zero? Okay, take it down, give it a go, give it a go. This is a pure exam scenario. After this, we're going to do a hyperbola with the shift in asymptotes. And I'm going to ask you to sketch that graph and the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient or positive gradient. You know how to do that. You know, you know, you know. Everyone. Mr. Kota, I got a question for you. Sure, sure. Please, fire away. Okay, so Mr. Kota, we also trying to make up some time, right? Yeah. Um, are we in agreement that we could possibly do a 15-minute comfort break to stretch the legs and then at whatever given time that's good uh, for the participants? Yeah. For us to perhaps do a five-minute leg stretch and then resume again? Okay, what time what time did we resume? We started at quarter past one. So we That's only correct. used an hour. So I think we yes. can yeah, we'll have a comfort break at quarter two. Okay, for five minutes. Seven minutes. Give them seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes. And then we push again, right? Okay, so it's at quarter two. At yeah. quarter two. And then yes, okay, we've got you there. Thank you. Okay, just a quick question. As a name, can we push till four today? Can we? Mm, well, I need to go shopping, eh? So <laughs> 30 minutes, come on. 30 unless minutes. you do the shopping for Give me, me it's no problem. We can do that. Give me 30 minutes. Where are you going shopping? Kromboom? Well, we've got enough uh, shops here in the area. So we've got a yeah. um, yeah, we used to go, When I was staying in Cape Town, I used to go there by the Kromboom. Uh, there's a Woolies there on the corner, ne? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, sketch. Right, so I don't know how you guys do it, but uh, my way of doing it, I like doing it this way. I just draw a quick table, X and Y. I just put 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. These values always stay the same. I substitute it in the original. So 3 to the power 0 is 1. 3 to the power 1 is 2. 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 to the minus 1 is a third, and 3 to the minus 2 is 1 over 9. Now I go to my graph, go to my graph, 0 and 1, there's your point, 1 and 3, 1 and 1, 2, 3, 2 and 9, minus um, 1 and a third, minus 2 and 2 over 9, and there we go, there's your graph. And that goes to the point 0 and 1. Okay, so we sketched it. The domain. What's the domain of G? 
which x values will give you y values, any x value. So you just say x is an element of real numbers. What's your range? Which y values? Will any negative y values ever give you uh, x values? No. So y greater than 0, y is an element of real numbers. OK. The equation of the asymptote. What's the asymptote? Your x-axis. And what is the equation of your x-axis? y equals 0. Good. If P of X is reflected about the Y axis. Now, please, you guys need to know your reflection laws. If it's reflected about the Y axis, X sign changes. Reflection about the X axis, Y sign changes. Reflection about the line Y equal X is the inverse function. All right? You swap the X and Y. So that means if P of X is equal, so P of X is equal to G of X reflected about the y axis so the x sign must change so p of x will equal to 3 to the minus x what's the inverse of g of x g of x the inverse in the form y equals is y equals log 3x that's your inverse that's g of minus 1 What's the domain of this? Now, what will your log graph look like? Your log graph would look like that. That's your inverse. That's g of minus 1. And that goes to 1 and 0. So what is the domain of this for all your x values greater than 0? So x greater than 0, x is an element of real numbers. The equation of the asymptote of g of minus 1. So now, what's your asymptote here, Hamza? Is your x-axis or your y-axis for your log graph? No, man. Your y-axis. Your y-axis is your asymptote. So x is equal to 0. Now, answer the last one. Where is g dash x? Where is g prime x greater than 0? Where is g prime x greater than 0? Question. Let's see. Yes. The asymptote also swaps over. Because now for your inverse graph, it cuts on your x-axis. Everything swaps over. Now your, your asymptote for your log graph is your y-axis. This graph will never touch your y-axis. So that's why the equation of your y-axis is x equals 0. Now, where is g dash x? So we know how g of x looks, right? So all I'm going to do, watch this. We know that this is g of x, right? Now, where is g dash x greater than zero? So all you have to do now is draw a tangent. You don't need to find the derivative of it. Coming down is negative. Going that way is negative. Negative divided by negative is a? Ah, so it's always positive. Yes or no? So that means for any x value, this here will always be an increasing function. So you'll say your answer to that is for x being an element of real numbers, or you can say from minus infinity to positive infinity. You don't need to find the derivative. You just need to find the sign of the gradient. If they told you g dash x less than 0, you'll say for no values of x. This graph will never have a negative gradient. What if they asked you, where is g dash x less than 0? This graph here will never have a negative gradient. So you'll say for no values of no value of values. Sorry? Was it of P of X? Or were we talking about? Oh, okay. All right. So what about the one where it was P of 
So if you had the graph y is equal to 3 to the minus x, that means this graph goes in that direction, right? That means this graph will always have a negative gradient. This is always a decreasing function. So here p dash x will always be less than 0 for any x value from negative infinity to positive infinity. This is increasing. That is decreasing. Question. Makes sense? Question. Let's see. Please repeat number four. Yeah, what was number four? What was number four's question? Uh, oh, just, just the yeah, okay, wait. So let me clear the frame here. What was it? If P of X is? No, no, no. If P of X is, is G of X reflected about the Y axis? Right. So P of X is equal to G of X. What was G of X? 3 to the power of X. Ne? Reflected about the Y axis. So your X sign changes. So that means P of X is equal to 3 to the minus X. That's your answer. And if it was reflected about the X axis, the Y sign would change. Then you would have minus G of X is equal to 3 to the X. So then P of X is equal to divide. In your final answer, that can't be negative. So divide by negative, so you'll have minus 3 to the power X. This is if it was reflected about the x-axis. Then your y sign changes. Agreed? Are we all Cassidy on the same has page? a question. Yes. Thank you for that. Cassidy has a question. How you find the sign of the gradient? Ch change in y over change in x. So if you add a straight line here, Let me clear the frame. So if I had a straight line like that, how do you find the gradient of the line? You draw a triangle there from here. Change in Y over change in X. So if we're going down, it's negative. We're going that way, it's negative. Negative divided by negative, positive. If your gra graph is going that way, we go that way. Coming down is negative. Going to the right is positive. Negative divided by positive is a negative this is for increasing this is for decreasing gradient this is where f dash x is less than zero this is where f dash x is greater than zero make sense everybody thank all okay you. thank you excellent all right Let's clear the frame. Let's say h of x is equal to 4 over x minus 1 plus 2. Right. Number one, question number one, I want your, I want your equations of the asymptotes. Equations of asymptotes. Now, don't get confused between asymptote and axis of symmetry. Asymptote, the quickest way to remember asymptote, the abbreviation for asymptote is S. You know in life you can't go around touching somebody's S. So you know <laughs> when you see asymptote, it's a line which your graph never touches. So when you see asymptote, don't touch. Stay away. Haram. Yellow okay. card, Mr. Kota. Yellow card. I, 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 that, that's clean, brother. There's a family show this, Mr. Kota. But asymptotes, find the equation of the, I didn't say put in your, okay, put in your asymptotes. Put, uh, right. PG13, nice PG13. Yeah, nice asymptotes. So if you see a, yeah, anyway, I want the equations of the asymptotes. All right, the lines which your graph never touches. Then I want the intercepts with your axis. And then uh, 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 I want you to sketch the graph. 
And then I want the equation of the axis of symmetry. with a negative gradient and then with a positive gradient. Right, so let's do the question number one. We've got about 10 minutes. I'm not going to, to save us time, I'm not going to let you do it on your own. I might as well do it for you. Right, the equation of the asymptote, that's your P, that's your Q. So X is equal to 1, P is equal to 2. Number two, the intercepts with the axis, let x equal to 0, solve for y, so y equals 4 over 0 minus 1 plus 2, y is equal to minus 4 plus 2, y is equal to minus 2, so when x is 0, y is minus 2, now you say, you have to give them both a chance, you can't be unfair now, uh, let x equal to 0, solve for y, let y equal to 0, let's solve for x, 4 over x minus 1 plus 2 is equal to 0, so 4 over x minus 1 is equal to minus 2 over 1. Cross multiply, we get minus 2 into x minus 1 is equal to 4. Right? We just cross multiply. Minus 2x plus 2 is equal to 4. Minus 2x is equal to 2. x is equal to minus 1. So your other point would be minus 1 and 0. And there we go. That's your intercepts with your axis. Are we all on the same page? G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Sketch the graph, Baba, sketch it. Do a rough sketch. Rough doesn't mean untidy, it just means not to scale. Draw one, draw it. Mr. Kota, how is the weather in Johannesburg? Hey, hot, K hot, K way hot. Oh, okay, <laughs> 32 no degrees. Fantastic. Well, here in Cape Town, we've got like four seasons. It's been yeah, quite yeah. warm during the course of the day. And then... I Where are you tomorrow, now? Are you, are you guys I'm under... I'm in my house. Oh, okay. Is it I'm, tornado I'm weather dinner. outside? Yeah, well, it's a little bit windy. And then Cape Town welcomes about 20,000 marathon runners. Tomorrow's the Cape Town Marathon. So I'm sure Eesh. they're going to be running well under cooler conditions. So we're going to yeah. expect some personal best and so on. So um, no one will be going to Seapoint tomorrow in certain areas uh, because the roads will be closed. So we will right. just be logged on to uh, Matt's Paper uh, 2. Uh, 10 That's it. That's it. That's There's only one way. K-Way. The K-Way <laughs> and OCAF SA. You know? That's it. Yeah. Only one way. Yeah, only one way. But I'm having fun, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kota, uh, I just hope I'll be able to sleep tonight with all this level of excitement. You know, my adrenaline is now, now, now. As the name was all this match tonight. If you go home, right, mm -hmm. and you 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 put your head on a pillow and you start dreaming that you are being chased by square root signs or by you're being chased by by x's and y's and whatever, it's okay. I, I promise you, it's natural. It happens to you. Mm. I'm, I'm going to be a worst I'm You're only going to be dreaming of functions. Your nightmare, boss. I'm only huh? going to be dreaming of calculus, functions, hey. sequence and series, and the list goes on. I'm hoping that when these learners write their exam, they must hear me. I'm, I must be in their ear like the Guptas. I must be in their ear screaming, yay, yay, positive gradient, negative gradient. Hamza. If you don't hear my voice in the exam, there's something wrong with you. Okay, so let's sketch the graph. How did we sketch the graph? How do we how do we draw the graph? Come on, clear the frame. Stop taking your granny's time. Right, so there we go. That's your y-axis. That's your x-axis. What was our asymptotes? X was equal to? X was equal to 1. And y was equal to? 2. No, not for the Q. You only change the sign for the X. Because your original equation is X minus P plus Q. Right. And then what were our two intercepts? Zero and minus two. No? No, oh, man. Give me the two coordinates that I gave you. Negative one and negative two. 
Now give me the give it to me in coordinates zero minus it was minus two and zero. Minus two and zero, and it was zero and negative one. Or was it the other way around? You know, you guys, man. Jesus, man. Right, so this one was minus one and zero. Yeah. And this one was zero and minus two. Yeah. There we go. Right, there we go. So you draw that, making sure they don't touch your ass. Some don't. <laughs> The code there. <laughs> I said as of don't, man. I, I just I, I got choked. I'm gonna put you in the naughty corner, Mr. Kota, and take over <laughs> this class. Well, uh, in school, uh, my whole year of matric, I was sitting in a naughty boy box. It's fine. What's new? I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be sleeping in the dog box. My wife puts me out in the dog box because I talk so much of nonsense. Well, uh, she wants to leave me. But in any case, so there we go. And that is graph. What is this graph? H. Yes. Now they want the equation of the asymptote, I uh, know the axis of symmetry with a. So now for your equations of your axis of symmetry, we're going to have y equals x plus c with a positive gradient and y equals minus x plus c with a negative gradient. And what do we use for x and y, guys? That the point where your two asymptotes meet, one and two. You don't use any of these two points. You always use the point because remember, your axis of symmetry is going to go like that. And like this, it's going to go through that point where the two asymptotes meet, where your p-value and your q-values meet. So obviously, y is 2, x is 1 plus c. So c is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1. So your first equation with a positive gradient is going to be y is equal to x plus 1. And then y2 equals minus 1 plus c. C is equal to 2 plus 1, which is 3. Y is equal to minus X plus 3. And that's with a negative gradient. If they don't specify, you give both. And you can answer it exactly like this in the exam. So the way I'm writing it out, my answers, I'm not just writing it out because I got nothing better to do because I'm scratching here. I'm giving you templates. You can copy and paste exactly the way I answer it. Now you can answer it in your exam. So this is, if they ask you for the negative gradient, you only give that one. If they ask you for the positive gradient, you only give that one. Now come and show you guys something quiet. Watch this. So you guys thought, so come and give you guys a higher order question on this. We got two minutes, three minutes left. So we work to the second. Right. Watch, I show you something lacquer. I show you something varam now. Watch this. I tell you h of x is equal to x minus 1 over x plus 5 is a hyperbola with a shift in asymptotes. I want the equations of the asymptotes. I want you to sketch. And let's see what you do with that. Now you guys sit and you say WTH. What happened there? Now you thought you knew your work. You know A over X minus B plus Q. Now you open up your paper and you see that. Uh, it is at this point that Johnny realized he failed. <laughs> it's at this point that Johnny decided, just turn over and go to the next question. What do you do? You need to get this into that form first. Who's seen this question before? Yes. Dale Yankees. This, it will be available on the OCAV website and on the OCAV YouTube channel. You can download it. You can play it over and over and over till I become your nemesis. Until you start seeing me in your dreams. Okay. Are we on break already? No. Right. Come and show you a trick. Come and show you. How many of you are battling with this? Are you crying with this one? Now, this one also came out in the NBTs. Right. Now, watch here. All you do, H of X is equal to what? Come and show you something quiet. You copy and you paste. 
Watch here. Watch here. Don't write. Watch. X plus 5. We copy and we paste. We put X plus 5 on the top. Right. Now, we can't change it. We need minus 1. So, plus 5. 5 plus a certain number must equal to minus 1. Yes or no? So, the certain number will equal to minus 1 minus 5. So, the certain number will equal to minus 6. Yes or no? Right. So, 5 minus 6 will give me minus 1. Now, what you do is you separate it. So, we say x plus 5 over x plus 5 minus 6 over x plus 5. And here we go. Here's your final answer. h of x is equal to minus 6 over x plus 5 plus x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 is 1. So what are the equations? There's it. a over x minus p plus q. Now, your p value, right, your 1, your one x value of your uh, asymptote, x is equal to minus 5 and y is equal to 1. It's your p value and your q value. Copy and paste and then do this here on the side. That's how you get it in that form. Others will get zero for this question in the exam. And this came out of a past paper. I bet most of you haven't seen this before. Did your teachers do it with you in school? Did your teachers do it with you in school? No. And that's what beats me. They don't do it with you in school and then they test you in the exams. They tell you if Joburg to Ferenakan is 50 kilometers, calculate the distance between the sun and the moon. Huh? Or how many hairs on a horse's tail? <laughs> okay. All right, guys. I hope you guys got that one. It's got it to three. Let's take a seven-minute comfort break. As a name. So we take That's a seven correct. Let's break. take a... Let's take a comfort break and then let us uh, agree that we will be resuming at that time. Are you happy with that, Mr. Kota? Uh, we went a little bit over time. Make it, make it 14.55. 14.55. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so we resume at 14.55. That's 5 to 3. But we're going to do till 4 o'clock. Inshallah, I mean. I mean, I mean uh, we I mean, can do well. until quarter to four, Mr. Kota. Do you know the the I'm getting feedback from the participants? There are some that are energy driven and that is um that are good, but we're seeing lots of the participants dropping off because they are fatigued. You know, it's been tired already. Game. Well, we had 170 people on now, and now we're down to 99 people. So no, don't lie. Are, what happened to them? You? Yeah, look, you know, not are all crying? of us are, are, are inspired or powered by, by Red Bull. But anyway, Mr. Kota, let us give you a comfort break so you may okay. resume shortly. I mean, so we agree I mean, on what time? What time are we talking 55, about? 55. Uh, 55, 55. 55. Speak to you then, okay. Mr. Kota. Okay, boss. It's our pleasure, Zaidan. We hope that you log on for the session tomorrow. So tomorrow, Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., we will be doing pure, pure maths and we'll be doing paper number two, right? And you can always refer back to our, our website uh, for archives of this video. So I'm going to show you a quick video on how to navigate onto the OCAF website. So if you go to your Google search engine and you search for OCAF essay, it will bring up the OCAF essay website like I'll be showing you in this video. This will bring you onto the OCAF essay website. And on the landing page, there's a banner there. Click on that banner. For more information, click here. Right? So you click on this banner over here. 
and it brings you on to uh, this event page OCAF SA forward slash metric mats it has all of the registration details and it has links so you see that is the link for Mats Paper 1 so you can click on that and you can watch and you can pause it right so the link for Mats Paper 1 is on there so you can refer back to that and this is definitely going to assist you with your study with your study group this applies for Mats Paper 2 as well so this is all in one place and you should share this web link to one and all of your friends your peers and your fellow learners at your school or friends in your network and this will be of value to them so that's a little informational video that we put together for you hope that you are enjoying the session feel free to give us some feedback uh, via the chat uh, facility and also when you do have some time <clears throat> send us a few photos on how you are linking up to the session you are sitting perhaps in front of your laptop uh, perhaps you're sitting in the kitchen perhaps you're sitting in your study perhaps you're sitting in your lounge with your notes your rulers your refreshments send us a few pics to that whatsapp number we'll collate this and this will be we'll um, share this with um, perhaps during the session tomorrow during Matt's uh, session two or we'll just use these photos for our reports and also this serves as a motivation to to others to join in with the session so we will be resuming at 2 55 we're just having a short uh intermission break feel free to stretch your legs and we'll speak to you shortly
Come guys. Hmm? Come, come. And we back. Round three, fight. <laughs> Final <laughs> round. People are tapping out already. You can't be tapping out now. Hmm. You can't be tapping out now. Not at this juncture in your year. Oh, you had virtual classes you also till one Bear in mind, the grade 12 learners also have to preserve the energy. So once you reach your red line, then we have to tap you out. You know, every time, every time your brain tells you shut down, you tell your brain shut up. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Kota, are we going to get the show on the road right. now? Let's go. Let's go. Let's fire. Let's fire. Are we okay. ready? Are we good to go? What? Everybody back online. Uh, I are think they're still, stretch, they're still stretching the, the limbs. The leg. The lips, yeah. Okay, so after this, we will go. Okay, 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 okay. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope you guys had a lekker like, stretch session there. And I hope you guys are having as much fun as we're having here in studio. I'm telling you, we are on fire. I can pull through till 9 o'clock tonight. How many of you guys can pull through? Uh, Hassanain is dead. He's stepping out already. I think Hassanain will tap out at 3 o'clock already. Mr. Kota, I'm a marathon runner. Eh? I've run comrades 89 kilometers. We'll see how you will do in that marathon thing. We run anyway. marathon with our mind. We picture. Exactly. We don't actually physically go on the road. We we calculate the distances. Exactly. Anyway. So we're doing a math marathon today, guys. And let's see. This is the Cape Argus. Cape to uh, KZN. The National Argus in Mathematics. So let's see whether you guys got it in you. All right. Let's get started, guys. We're starting with... Uh, let's start... You know, there's so much more I want to show you. Unfortunately, Ish is the time, Baba. It's the time. I wish I can talk to you for the whole weekend and show you everything. But we can only do what we can do within the time limit that we have. All right. If I could, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Let's get started. Okay. We're starting with finance. Put your heading down there, finance. I'm going to finish the whole of finance for you for the year. Now. Finance, the first thing you need to know is depreciation, reducing balance method depreciation. Then you need to know future value and present value. Then you need to know the balance outstanding on a loan. Balance outstanding on a loan. Then you need to know the trading of an asset. This is your whole overview of the whole topic of finance. Then you need to know the immediate payment when you make a payment early. Then you need to know deferred payment where you pay late. Deferred payment. And then you need to know the last one, which is what we call the final payment on a loan. So this is what we call annuities. Right. So we're first going to start with depreciation. So you need to know one, two, three, four, five, six seven models so we're going to do one example of each and that should take us to the end of our today's session uh, obviously sequences and series i think we'll start with that first thing tomorrow morning then we'll go into paper two or we might do paper two and end up sequences and series i think everybody knows we've been you've been doing it it's coming out of your ears already but no stress and the main thing for tomorrow is your double and compound angles and euclidean 
right? But I'll show you everything. We'll touch, we'll try and touch on as much as we can between today and tomorrow. Remember also that if you guys want to book for next weekend, my cell phone number 081-706-3986. That's for next weekend's workshop. You can also contact Hassanein at Okaf or you can WhatsApp me if you'd like to book for next weekend. And next weekend, it's 8 in the morning. We start at 8 o'clock. We finish off at 4 o'clock on each day. And we will do ev we will try and do every humanly possible scenario that you could possibly see in the exam. Our K-Way students here in Johannesburg, whatever we've showed them for the year, they wrote their prelim paper. None of them scored below 50 to 60% in their paper. So they all scored above 60. So guys... Join, join the revolution. Join the K-Way revolution. Okay. So these are all your topics. That was my number. And here we go. Let's start with finance. Now, depreciation, the first question that you would see in depreciation, they would tell you there, right, how long, take this one down, and I know you guys have seen this in a past paper before, how long will it take for an MV, motor vehicle, to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method or the diminishing balance method. At 15% per annum. Oh, yeah. So we know diminishing balance method, A equals P, I'm not, A equals P into 1 minus I to the power N. Your original value is P, they don't give it to you, 1 minus, your depreciation rate is 0 0.15 to the power N. Whenever they ask you for how long, they are asking for N. And they say 25% of its original value. So if the original value is P, 25% is 0 0.25 P. And there's N. We need to find N on the top. So divide this side by P, divide that side by P. You're left with 0 0.25. 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85 to the power N. Now we want to make N the subject of the formula, so we use logs. We attach a log, we attach a log, and we bring n in the front. So n log 0, 0.85 is equal to log 0, 0.25. So n, to isolate n, we divide this side by log 0, 0.85. We divide that side by log 0, 0.85. So n is equal to log 0, 0.25 divided by log 0, 0.85. And what's your answer? What's it? 4,86 years? No, 8,56, I think. 8,56. Just check it. 8,56 years. Log 0, 0,25. I think I'm right. No, I know I'm right. 8,53. Well, each to their own. 8,53 years. And that's your first example on depreciation. Very popular, asked in most papers. You'll come across this quite a bit. Now we talk about future value, present value. Many of you don't know when to use future value. And many of you don't know when to use the present value. So I'll show you now. Very simple. I'll give you a short acronym to learn, <laughs> to remember. I'll try and be as kosher as possible. I'm going to get red carded here, bro. Sure, we'll take it to a red card. Please. We're going to bounce yeah. you off the session, Mr. Kauten. I'm going to take over the class. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're going to bounce me. Right. So you took this down. I hope you got it down. Right. Future value. We use it for savings. Or another word for savings is sinking fund. That's the future value formula. And the present value, we use it for loans. So if you just remember, FSPL. FSPL. Mm, let's use it. The kosher way. Flippin' stupid people. <laughs> if you remember flippin' stupid people, you'll be, or freaking stupid people, you'll be able to realize future value for savings, present value for loans. 
Was that kosher enough? Ah. Eh. Come by my friends. Eh. Right. Future value for savings, present value for loans. You know what your future value formula is. By now, you should know x into 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 all over i. And then your present value is equal to x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n. Right? That's n. That's n on the top. N. All over i. This is the same as, this is a series of payments. This is like A into R to the power N minus 1 over R minus 1. Does that look familiar to you? Isn't that your SN formula for geometric? It's the same. It's a series of payments. It's a geometric series of payments. Never knew that. And now you know. Okay. So let's start off now. Let's start off with the loan amount. Let's, let's do a loan. Then we do a balance outstanding on the loan. Then we'll do the trading of an asset. Then we do immediate payment. Then we do deferred payment. Then we do final payment. Then we all go home nicely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, many payments before. You pay your school fees here, Baba. Here you pay. You pay. Right. Let's go. Let's delete. Right. So we take out a loan. Watch here. We take out a loan. How much do you want to borrow from the bank? Come on. Tell me. How much? Uh, so little. Uh, come on, man. Let's take out a loan. Let's take, Let's take 250,000 rand loan. Over how long do you want to repay the loan? Six years. What interest do you want to pay? Let's say 8% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate your monthly repayment. Now, this is the easy one, obviously. Right. So, in your answer, it's a loan. Is it present value? Think. FSPL. Flippant, stupid people. Thank you. So, we go PV equal X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. Calculate your monthly repayment. We're looking for X. Right. 250,000 is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus what's your interest rate 0 comma 0 8 put it as a decimal divided compounded monthly divided by 12 to the power 12 times how many years six years all over i 0 comma 0 8 over 12 so to isolate x watch here to isolate x if you want to know we start at the bottom you multiply it by that and you divide it by everything else besides the X. Now you plug it in straight onto your case. So go to your FX 82s. Let's go to, let's start at the bottom. Put your friend, yeah, FX 82s need a, need a knock first. All of them. I don't know why. What is wrong with these FX 82s? They always need a clap. Divided by 12, multiplied by 250,000 equals. Now you divide that by open brackets. 1 minus open, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,08 over 12, close brackets to the power 12 times 6. What's 12 times 6? 72. 72, ne? Then close brackets equals. Eesh, why I get the minus? I, there's, a, there's a problem here what I did on the calculator. 0, 0,08 over 12 multiplied by 250,000. Right, I get that. Divided by open brackets, 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,08 over 12, close brackets to the power 72, close brackets. Why do I get a minus answer? I get a minus 2716. Do you guys get minus 2716? I'm not supposed... No, 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 no. 12 times 6 is 72. Why am I getting a negative? I'm not supposed to get a negative. So I got 0, 0,08 over 12 times 250,000. I'm going to try it one more time, guys. 0, 0,08 over 12 multiplied by 200 and, uh, 1 minus 1 plus... Ah, that's where I made a mistake. 
to the power minus n. I forgot to put the minus. That's where I went wrong. Times 250,000 divided by open brackets, 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,08 over 12, close brackets to the power minus 72. Close brackets equals. You see, the minus, what a big difference it makes. 4, 3, 8, 3, 3, 1 per month. There we go. See, I forgot to put in the minus there. And there we go. That's your monthly repayment on 250000 at 8% per annum compounded monthly. All right. Let's do a balance outstanding on a loan. Now you buy a house. So you decide you want to buy a house. You saw a nice townhouse. You see a nice apartment for $1.6 million. All right. You're going to repay it. You take a loan from the bank and you're going to repay it over 30 years. So let's see. Right, so we're now going to do the balance outstanding on a loan. So the first thing now, you took out a loan. Take this down. You take out a loan for 1.6 million to buy a house. You're taking it over 30 years. And you're going to pay 8.2% per annum. Compounded monthly. Right. Uh, you stop paying. After 20 years, calculate the balance outstanding, the balance outstanding for the remaining period for the remaining period. <coughs> right, answer. Firstly, we need to calculate what your monthly repayment was. So that was a straightforward PV. So PV is equal to X into. So in fact, what I'm going to do now, just give me a second. I'm not even going to rewrite the whole formula down now because um, I need space here. So I'm going to go into the PV formula. So I'm going to say 1.6 million, 1,600,000 1, is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I. 0, 0,082 over 12 to the power, oopsie, I need some space there. So let me take that out. And I'm just going to put in there to the power minus 12 times 30 years divided by I, 0, 0,082 divided by 12. So x is equal to, let's do it now on our calculator, fraction 0, 0,082 over 12 multiplied by 1,600,000. Divide that by open brackets, 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus fraction 0, 0,082 over 12. Close brackets to the power minus 12 times 30. Close brackets equals 11,000, which is about right, 11,964 and 7 cents per month. Now you stop paying after 20 years. So now you use to calculate your balance outstanding. You use your PV formula, but now you're looking for PV. So PV, that's your balance outstanding, is 11,964,07 into 1 minus 1 plus I 0, 0,082 over 12 to the power minus all over 0, 0,082 over 12. Now, I left that out on purpose. This N, we take your full term minus your paid up term. Your full term minus your paid up term, including your compoundings. Right? So that's minus. Right. What was your full term? How many years? So it's 30 times 12. Minus your paid up term was what? Or you stopped paying after 20 years, 20 times 12. So this minus here is how much? 30 times 12 is 360. 20 times 12 is 240. 360 minus 240 is 120. 
So there are 120 payments outstanding. So you take your full term, you just convert the N to F minus P. So present value now, balance outstanding, 11, 964,07 into 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus open brackets, the 1 plus fraction. No, what did I do here? Yeah, um, 1 minus 1 plus I, 1 minus 1 plus fraction, uh, 0, 0.082 over 12 close brackets to the power minus 120 close brackets equals and we divide that by your fraction 0, 0.082 over 12 boom you still owe them 977,560 rand 72 cents outstanding why because for 20 years for the first 15 years you were only paying the interest on 1.6, how much did you end up paying for the house? For that one point, so some of your parents or some of you will go and buy a house. Do you ask the guy how much you paid for the house? He say 1.6. Did you pay cash? No. You took it over 30 years. Oh, okay. So let's work out how much you paid. What you paid. So you didn't pay 1.6 for the house. You paid 11,964,07 multiplied by 12 months, multiplied by 30 years. You paid 4,307,065.20. So you paid four bars. You paid 4 million on a 1.6 million rent house over 30 years. Yes, to get your payments down. But you think the charos, you think we Indians will pay more. We pay less. Yeah. And we think we're doing the bank a favor. <laughs> Yeah, you put, you put in 15,000 rand a month. It will bring your number of years down to 15 years or 10 years. That's how you beat their system, by paying more. Because then it compounds in your favor. It doesn't compound in their favor. Question? Correct. Let's hear. How do you calculate the interest paid? Right. So all you got to do there is make you, then you just got to make I the subject of your formula. You got to make I the subject of the formula. So you just play around, you just manipulate your formula. So you got 1.6 million. You got this and they told you it's over 12 years. You just make, you know, from your formula. Okay, wait, let me, let me do this here. So let's do it like this, right? Let's, let's show you. Let's show you, let's show you. So if you had PV is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the power minus N all over I. Right. So now to make I the subject of the formula, you're going to have PV times I is equal to X into 1 minus. Now, generally, they won't ask you for the interest paid because they'll ask you for your number of years. With these big formulas here, they're not going to ask you for the interest paid. They'll always give you the interest. I'll show it to you just now. Let's do the trade-in value. Question. Because 1 plus I, uh, just give me a second here, 1 minus, so we got 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N. All right. Now you divide by X, you divide by X. So that's going to be over X. So your X is gone. And the plus one will come on the other side. So P V times I over X minus one will equal to minus one plus I. Like I'm saying, all you're going to do is just make I the subject of your formula. Let me see. If they ask for the amount, what amount, Cassidy, what amount are you talking about? If they ask you how much interest you paid on the house, then all you do is you take your monthly repayment. Watch here. Let me clear this. Remember, what, what was our amount there? 11,000? Go back to that one. 964,77. That was per month. 07. Now you multiply it by 12 and you multiply it by 30. So now work out 
11, 9, 6, 4, comma, 0, 7 times 12 times 30, you now paid 4,307,065 rand 20. And how much interest did you pay? So the capital amount was 1,600,000. So you minus 1,600,000 and you get 2,707,065 rand 20 interest. There we go. Does that answer your question, Cassidy? I'm hoping. Right. Let's go into the... It must be minus 72. Yes, to the power minus 72. Because you're working on your, your PV formula. Okay, I'm deleting this. Let's now go into a trade-in. So you buy a car. You buy a car for 850000 It depreciates on the... Okay, wait. Firstly, it needs to be traded in after five years. Traded in after five years for a new car. After five years. Right. Depreciation is calculated on the reducing balance method. At 15% per annum. The new price is going to increase by an inflation rate of 11% per annum. A sinking fund is set up that earns 8.5% per annum compounded monthly. Right. Calculate your monthly repayment into your sinking fund for 10 marks. Calculate your monthly repayment into you. So the first thing you do, you calculate the book value. I'm going to break it up for you in four steps. Firstly, you calculate the book value or the scrap value. So that is A equal P into 1 minus I times N. Then we calculate the new price of the vehicle. And that is A equal P into 1 plus I to the power N. Then we calculate the value of the fund that you need to set up. So we subtract these two. Then you calculate your monthly repayment into your fund. So the book value is A equals what's p 850000 into 1 minus your depreciation 0, 0.15 to the power 5 because it must be traded in after 5 years yes or no and what amount will that give you so let's do it let's take 850000 into 1 minus 0, 0,15 close brackets to the power 5, 377. That means your 850,000 rand car is worth 377,149,515. Or let's say 52. I'm just rounding off here. You don't round up. I'm just rounding off for the purpose of the explanation. The new price, we're going to take the full 850,000 into 1 plus inflation rate, 0, 0,11 to the power 5. So what will your new car price be? 850 into 1 plus 0, 0,11 close brackets to the power 5. Oh, you get 1 million four. You get, I'm just writing it here because I don't have space, guys. So it's 1, 4, 3, Two, two nine nine, two nine nine, comma four three. So it's one point four million red. Now you're trading this car in, so you that's like it works out like a discount. So that minus that will give you your value of your fund. So your value of your fund now is minus. 
comma five two. That means the value of the fund now is one o five five one four nine comma nine one. Now you are going to be putting in money, so it's a future value, right? So F V is equal to X into one plus. Uh, so you're going to use your FV formula, right? So one plus um, your interest rate 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.085 over 12 to the power 12 times 5 minus 1 all over 0, 0, 0.085 over 12. And your FV is this amount here. So let's work out what's your monthly repayment. X is equal to. So now we take. 0, 0.085 over 12 multiplied by 1055149,91 equals divide that by open open 1 plus fraction 0, 0.085 over 12 close brackets to the power 12 times 5 is 60 minus 1 close brackets equals there you go. Your final answer, 14174,04 per month. So it's done in these four parts. So step number one, step number one, you calculate the book value. Step number two, you calculate the new price. Step number three, you calculate the value of the fund by subtracting these two. Then step number four, you use your FV formula to calculate your monthly repayment into the fund. That's X. Are we all okay? So that was called your balance outstanding on uh, your, your trade in. That's called your trade in. We are now going to do immediate payment, then deferred payment, then final payment. Okay, now watch. Mr. Kota, someone's phone is ringing in the background there. Can we perhaps maybe disengage that phone? It's the office, it's the office call. I don't know, just check which phone is it there and just put it off the hook. Right, let's go into the immediate payment. Right, you take out a loan for 500,000. You take it over seven years at, um, let's take it 9% per annum, compounded monthly. Your first payment is made on the day you took out the loan. So that's immediately. Calculate your new monthly payment. Right, now let me show you guys something. Right, so now we know it's PV is equal to x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n all over i. But you paid immediately. So your PV is no longer PV. It's PV minus x. Because you don't know what your first payment was. But you made that first payment. So your loan amount is no longer PV. It's PV minus your first payment that you put in early. So now, calculate your new monthly repayment. We need to solve for X. So all you do now is you take this X onto the other side. So watch what we do. We say PV is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the power minus N all over I, right? There we go, plus X. The minus X comes onto the other side. as plus X. Now we want X. So what must we do? Take out the highest common factor, am I right? So PV is equal to X into 
1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n all over i plus 1. x divided by x, Hamza, yeah. is 1. So we want x. So all you have to do now is take PV and divide it by this whole thing. So x is equal to, what's PV? 500,000. Divided by this whole thing. 1 minus 1 plus, what was your interest rate? 9%. 0 0.09 over 12 to the power minus 12 times 7. All over I. 0 0.09 over 12 plus 1. So now we go to our calculator. We say 500,000. Divided by, open brackets, or oh, you know what you can do also, you can do fraction, isn't it? Let's start off with a fraction and we start off with 500,000 in your numerator, divided by, uh, open brackets, fraction, 1 minus, open brackets, 1 plus, Fraction 0, 0,09 over 12, close brackets to the power, minus 12 times 7, go down to the denominator, fraction again, 0, 0,09 over 12, and let's go to the side, plus 1, close brackets. 7, you should get your answer that your calculator should give you is 7917,16. I hope you all got that. We're almost there, guys. Just hang in. Two more questions. Two more questions. This was the immediate payment. Were you paying early? Now we're going to be paying late. So if you're paying early, it drops your loan amount. So if you pay late, what do you think it happens? Of course, you're going to be punished for paying late. All right. I'm clearing the frame. Now we're doing a deferred payment. So put the heading there, deferred. We're on the second last concept, guys. Just hang in there. Don't tap out now. It's 25 to 4. We've got another about 10, 15 minutes. I've got two or three questions and then we're done. So let's take your loan amount again. Your loan amount, let's take 500,000. You take in over seven years. All right? Act. 9% per annum, compounded quarterly. You make your first payment in nine months' time. If you're a woman, maybe you fell pregnant. So you decided to <laughs> pay late. Right. So first payment made, first payment in nine months' time. Calculate your new quarterly payment. Right, in your answer. Right, firstly, you calculate your new loan amount. Now, your new loan amount. Now, picture this here. Watch here. Here's a timeline. T0, T9. Nine months time. Month 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Quarterly. 1, 2, 3, first quarter. 1, 2, 3, second quarter. So quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3. Now, you took out the loan year. Right? You took out the loan year. You don't get, they're expecting the money here. You don't, you don't pay. So, they don't punish you here. You then skip this payment and you and then you only make a payment there. So for how many quarters are you being punished for? 
Good, you're being punished for two quarters, not for three quarters. Although it's nine months time, you subtract one quarter from three quarters. So it's two quarters, right? If it was monthly in, and you made your payment in nine months time, you'll be punished only for eight because the first month you don't get punished. They were expecting your money at the end of the month. Okay, so now, so you're getting punished for two quarters. Right, so your new loan amount is A equal P into 1 plus I to the power 2. Two quarters you're being punished for. So now that's 500,000 into 1 plus I 0 0,09 over 4 compounded quarterly to the power 2. So let's go 500,000. Open brackets, 1 plus 0, 0,09 over 4, close brackets to the power 2. You now, because you paid late, your new loan amount is 522,753.125. Now you calculate your new repayment. And that is present value. So 522753,125 is equal to x into 1 minus 1 plus i, 0, 0,09 over 4 to the power minus. I'm leaving that open. I'll tell you why. All over, all over. And that will give you 0, 0,09 over 4. Now you took out for seven years. So 7 times 4, you had to make it in 28 payments. Yes or no? You, you skipped 2 payments. There's it. That 2 payments you skipped. So in how many payments must you make it? Ah, ah. You, 26. Good. So to the power 26. They didn't extend your time. You got to pay a greater amount in a shorter period of time. So x is equal to, now we take 0, 0,09 over 4, over 4, multiplied by 522,753,125 equals, we divide that by open brackets 1 minus open 1 plus fraction 0, 0,09 over 4, close brackets to the power minus 26 close brackets equals now you're going to be paying them 26,776 rand and 12 cents per quarter you probably would have been owing uh, paying uh, repaying them initially about 21,000 or 22,000 but because you skipped the first two quarters you only paid or you skipped the last two quarters you only paid at the end of your third quarter you're now paying a higher premium in a shorter period of time and you're repaying a higher loan amount. So you break it up like this. Step number one, you do your new loan amount. Step number two, you do your new repayment amount. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. We're on the last concept. The final payment. That's the thing. Have you tapped out already? No, I actually wanted to reach out to you and find out how you're doing because you are really enjoying yourself. You're sipping on that uh, jet fuel there and yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm really fine. encouraged for you. I'm on fire, brah. You tell me to pull through till 6 o'clock. I'm here till 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, brah. I finish it. No problem. I you can do. have a special like class. I'm like a you flippant, can... ever ready battery. You, I push for an hour, hour and a half. Give me a five, ten minute break in between. I just need to do some hoosa and I'm sharp. Mm, got you. I'll have a special class for you with perhaps one or two uh, students there um, that's got that, uh, that stamina and so on. Let me not uh, delay further, Mr. Kota. Take the show away. Right, right, right. We're on the last concept. This is the last concept, guys. Which we, it's the it's called the final payment, and it's the final problem for today. How coincidental! Right. 
So put the heading there, the final payment. Put the heading, the final payment. The final payment. Right, watch here. So now you take out a loan. So say you have lots of kids in the future. Inshallah, Allah gives you people lots of children. So you decide to buy a bus for your children, right? Because you guys are going to have lots of kids, inshallah, I mean. And the bus is 150,000, uh, 850,000. Right. You repay monthly. You repay monthly for your bus to handle your 65 children at 10,5% per annum. <laughs> four wives. Islam allows you four. Right. 10,5% per annum. Uh, no, 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 no. Your monthly repayment, sorry, of 24,000 rands per month. Right. Uh, question. Your interest rate is 10,5% per annum. Compounded monthly. Two questions here, guys. How many, question number one, how many full payments of 24,000 will you make? How many full payments of 24,000 will you make to amortize? I'm teaching you a new word. Amortize. What does the word amortize? To kill. I'll amortize you. I'll kill you. To kill the loan. To pay up the loan. Amortize. Coming from Mortal Kombat. <clears throat> and how many payments? Right? So how many full payments? Now, calculate. Question number two. So this one is worth five marks. The next one. Calculate the final payment required to amortize the loan. Calculate the final payment. The final payment required to repay the loan. And that's for seven marks. Total marks, 12. Let's see if you guys can do it. Let's see if you guys can do it. Yasin, just give me that kit. Just to show all of you, this is our video kit. If any of you would like the kit, this is a whole grade 11 and 12 syllabus with all our videos, over 24 hours of training that will teach you step by step. I present it live on a whiteboard in a classroom situation. You can contact me on my cell phone number 081-706-3986 and you can order these kits. These kits are 1,500 with the workbook. And you'll must, we've got this for maths and we've got it for science. So even if you're doing science and you're doing physics and chemistry, we've got the same kit that covers the whole grade 11 and 12 syllabus in detail with the workbook, step by step, every possible type of question that you could get for the exam is in these kits. Right. So one of the learners here in house here have just purchased the kit today. Congratulations, Mr. Yasin. <laughs> but wait, if you order right now, you'll get a free Red Bull. <laughs> order now. Are we doing for time there, Mr. Kauter? Are we doing good? We're doing good. We're doing good. It's 42. We're going to go a little bit over, but it's only two questions that we're going to answer. All right, let's go. Are you okay? Are you surviving? All silent there, bro. All right. So how many full payments will you make? So now let's go. Let's open up a new frame, right? Uh, so now, how many full payments? So now we're going to go PV, right? PV is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. So now, 850,000 is equal to 24,000. They gave you your monthly repayment into 1 minus 1 plus I, I 0, 0,105 over 12 to the power minus N all over I, 0, 0,105. One, sorry, 0, 0,105 over 12. Now we need to solve for N. So I'm answering question number one. So we take this times that. So 0, 0,105 over 12. Times, so we take 850,000 multiplied by fraction 0, 0,105 over 12. You get 0, 0,105 divided by 12. Multiply by 850,000. 
you get 7437 eh? so you get 7437,5 so that multiplied by that now we divide it by 24,000 so that's out then the plus one will come on the other side as minus one is equal to minus into now one plus 0, 0,105 over 12 equals 807 over 800, 807 over 800 to the power minus n. Now this will give me 7437,5 over 24,000 minus 1 equals, I get minus 265 over 384 is equal to minus 807 over 800 to the power minus n. That negative and negative will cancel out. So now minus n log 807 over 800 is equal to log 265 over 384. So minus n will equal to, so now divide by this, divide by that, so we get log 807 over 800 minus n will equal to so let's go log fraction 265 over 384 close brackets divided by log 807 over 800 we now get minus 42.57 minus 42.58 minus 42.58 years so that and that will cancel how many full payments will you make you will make 42 full payments and you'll make one payment so in total you'll make 43 payments you'll make 42 full payments of 24,000 24k 24,000 and you'll make one that's a k right and you'll make one payment less than 24,000 so in total, you'll make 43 payments. Agreed? Agreed? Now, the next question is calculate the value of that final payment, that one payment less than 24,000. Calculate that. Now, it's also broken up into three parts. So I'll show you how to do it. It's not difficult. It will take us three minutes, two minutes. Final component. You guys all right? Are you sharp? Yasin? Hamza? Zain? Okay. We're doing the last part. So what did we say? Let's clear the frame. Right. So now what you do is you've got to calculate what you do in pencil. You write bank's amount. So Banks amount is A equals P into 1 plus I to the power 42 payments. So that's 850,000 into 1 plus, what was your interest rate? 0, 0,105 over 12 to the power 42. And that will give you 850,000 into 1 plus fraction 0, 0,105 over 12 close brackets to the power 42 that means you owe the bank 1 million two hundred and twenty five thousand two hundred and twenty five thousand five hundred and forty one rands 24 cents you owe the bank that you are paying twenty four thousand rand every month remember for 42 payments so that's future value now you calculate your amount that you paid in so that's future value why future value? It's like a savings. You are putting in 24,000 rand per month into 1 plus I, 0, 0,105 over 12. And you made 42 payments, minus 1, all over I. I is 0, 0,105 over 12. So that means your amount. Now, your amount, Do write this in pencil. You don't write that. You only do the calculations. You show the first part. And you show the second part. Right. So now we go. 24,000. Open, open. 1 plus fraction. 0, 0,105 over 12. 
close brackets to the power 42 minus 1 close brackets equals we divide that by fraction 0 comma 105 over 12 and now you get your amount must be less than that 1211830,559. So this amount is less than that. So your final payment is going to be this minus that plus one more month's interest. 1225541,24 minus 1211830. 559 equals so your final payment is 13710,68 right so A equals P into 1 plus I what's your interest rate 0, 0,105 over 12 to the power 1 month so now we multiply that by open brackets 1 plus fraction 0, 0,105 over 12 close brackets you, uh, your final amount, your final amount to amortize the loan is 13,830 rand, 65 cents. Final payment. Where? No, final payment, I take this amount minus that amount. And that will give me that amount. And that amount times one more month remember a equal p into one plus i to the power n so to the power one more month and we get thirteen thousand eight hundred and thirty rand and 65 cents boys and girls ladies and gentlemen jazakallah thank you so much All right i hope you guys enjoyed today's bumper session and i hope you guys had as much fun doing maths as we are having or we have had today tomorrow morning we start 10 a.m sharp we've got lots of work to do tomorrow have a lack of rest if you got time, I know your brains are fried right now, but go home, take a bit of a nap or take a bit of a rest. Go through all the notes. Still, if there's anything that you didn't understand from today, I'm still available tomorrow for you to sort it out, right? Guys, again, if you guys want to WhatsApp us, you want to contact us, you can contact me 081-706-3986. That's 081-706-3986. That is my cell phone number. You can WhatsApp me. Don't phone me. I won't answer. All right. Love you guys lots. All from our studio here in Johannesburg. Jazakallah, Samin. Jazakallah for everybody. I think you can go and do your shopping now before you get fired from your wife. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kota. Yes, definitely. We have to do the shopping now. We need to get some things. I would love to extend a vote of thanks to all of the participants that have registered and they have logged on from the Breath and Width of South Africa. Thank you for logging on. Thank you for your engagement thank you for your comments for your feedback posing your questions we really appreciate that and also from from fielding some of the inquiries for the registration i know that certain schools um have been having a group of learners together at their schools at their home so we thank you passionate educators for assisting learners that do not have access to internet right and assisting them to work some sort of a body system thank you mr kota for your informative session i definitely had some fun and we're looking forward to the session tomorrow would like to extend a vote of thanks to uncle zainal abidin kaji mikhail collier sharina riftin but more importantly the man of the moment ali sebastian masango he's been very instrumental in assisting us at the Oakhav Johannesburg office, we ran quite a few tests. There was lots of setups that was required, so we really appreciate them. Uh, appreciate you for your uh, assistance. We salute you. Thank you so much. So, God willing, tomorrow will be Maths Paper 2. We will be starting from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Try and see if you can log on a little bit early. We might just want to start a little bit early. More information can be found on Oakhav SA. Dot org dot ZA. I'm just going to play a short video and this video and I'll talk through it. It's a run through on how to access the OCAF website. It's very important because you could have some of your peers at school that wants to view the session. You yourself want to view the session. So it'll give you a one-stop shop on how to find these videos. 
So there we go. So this is a walkthrough through this video. And basically what you need to do is go on to Google, open up your Google browser on your phone or your laptop. That's the correct spelling for OCAV, ocavsa.org.za. The website will pop up. And in the next frame, you'll see that this is the landing page of the OCAV SA website. On the landing page, there is a banner. Click through on this banner. This will take you to the event page, uh, the Matrix, uh, Matrix Maths Online Workshop. When you click on this page, this is the event page. And besides the registration link, right, if you scroll right down to the bottom, you will have a click through uh, of the Maths 1 paper, what we dealt with today. You click on that, that will take you through to YouTube and you can view and pause and you can go back to that. As well as Maths Paper 2, um, uh, we will be going through that tomorrow. That will also be on the on the OCAF essay page. So this is the website that you need in order to get access to that session. So that's so that's it, um, uh, folks. I thank one and all for joining. Uh, let's have a look here. We thank one and all for joining the session, and we hope to see you bright and early tomorrow. I thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and good afternoon, and all the best to you. Thank you.